Hello, hello, Dan. How's it going, man? Hey. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Did you survive the uh, eclipse? Yeah. Did you go out and check it out? I mean, there, um, out here in Southern California, there wasn't much to it. So it was like a little, <clears throat> like a little dimmed sun, but that was about it. Yeah. I don't know. I, I was, uh, I was driving around, I was getting a, bit, a workout in at the time. And it was just interesting seeing all these people like stand outside and look up. I thought it, it felt like something out of a movie, like, you know, like, like one of those sci-fi movies where people step out and they, it's like, like a spaceship or something. It was actually a movie uh, <clears throat> on Netflix. Don't look up. Uh, I haven't seen it. No, it's, it's, it's pretty funny. It's got like Leonardo DiCaprio and the, the premise is like, there's a, a meteor coming, but like, it's politicized so like half half the population says ignore it don't look up mm -hmm. is it good it's it's stupid but it's funny <laughs> there's a there's a show that i just got into um three body problem or something like that have you heard about have you heard of that before no that's pretty good i'm not like I, yeah three body problem mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's pretty good check it out i don't know if you're into sci-fi or anything like that but it's pretty good yeah a little bit I just, I don't really, honestly, I don't care for like, um, like the fantasy stuff, like, um, like Harry Potter. They did nothing for me, dude. I like Harry Potter. I love that stuff. A lot of people do, man. So, I mean, I know I'm the weird one. I, I don't know. I, I can't get behind like normal drama stuff. I don't know why. Like just normal, boring drama. Some, some drama I can get behind, but a lot of it I can't. There's like this one show. Um. I forget what it's called. It's like billionaires. Called Keeping Up with the Kardashians. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> no, but there's a show. It's like billionaires or some some crap. <sighs> oh, what. I know. Yeah, B billions. Billions. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I look at that. I'm like, it's so fucking dumb. That show makes me so angry. Like, I don't know a single billionaire that like sits around on a yacht with his kids. He's like, who should we pass this off to? Like, that's like 90% of their life. Like, I don't know. Like the fact that it's like ranked so high and people watch it and they're, they think that's like real life. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with people? Well, I, I got into a uh, success succession. Yeah. He, that actually, you know what that, no, that's the one I'm talking about. I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a show I'm talking about. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. I, dude, it's, yeah, I mean, I kind of, but like still like, I don't know. Like, part of me yeah. just like, I don't know any business owner that like behaves this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I try to watch too much TV though. Yeah. Well, I'm glad nobody in here watches Catching Up with the Kardashians. That's a good sign or else I'd have to maybe boot somebody out uh, of our coaching program. Mason, how's it going, man? Adam, how are you guys doing? Good. I got someone in my room making a VSL right now. That's why I'm out here. Okay. And they're using my my camera and stuff, so I just didn't want to miss it. So I'm here. Cool. Uh, is it uh, Keegan that's recording it, or? Yes. Yep. Is he a natural on camera? Or is he a silly dude, rabbit? Dude, it's so fucking bad, dude. <laughs> like, it's so fucking, dude. It's so bad. <laughs> is that him? Did you just hear? I heard somebody. Yeah, you can hear him. Yeah, we literally just got food like halfway through. I was like. Dude, I thought that I was bad. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> he's fucking terrible. Oh, shit. He's okay. He's working on it, though. Yeah. Well, I, I can't wait. I'll send it to you, but yeah. we should have. Well, I'm physically not letting him leave my house until he's done tonight with it. So, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, we had the solar eclipse and everything. I was like, if you're, like, you're going to see, like, nighttime twice today, but yeah, you're true. not leaving until it's done. So, I'm going to, I'm literally staying up and I'm going to edit the entire thing and then I'm going to send it over to you yeah that's good that's cool i i know it, i it took me like literally seven hours of recording for mine so you know tell him that and that's like a good sign if he spends less than seven hours yes good. he's at like hour three or four right now and he's like oh, dude i don't it's like it's like a high school presentation he's like dude i don't understand like it's hard but it's it's something that you have to do and you have to do it the right way and i feel so bad because like i'm standing behind him like dude no your delivery is terrible <laughs> like i just feel like a terrible person about it but I, I don't like I don't know like what helped me was I mean I don't know how you're doing it but like obviously like looking at the lens but then also like having a monitor so I can kind of like see myself it's almost like I'm talking to myself that's what I did is like right underneath like the lens I had like a monitor where I would look at myself so I could see myself and that I don't know for some reason like that helped me I don't know everybody's a little bit different but yeah we just have like a 
we're using loom and we're basically just putting them in the, the bottom left corner. And then I made, like I showed you what I made, obviously, right? So I'm using that. And then I'm, we're using the, um, there's a speaker note section on loom that you can use where you can basically just like type in whatever you want to say. And then when you record loom, it actually doesn't even show your notes on the screen. So it's actually almost like you're reading off the screen, which is really cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. I don't know if you guys do that. No, oh, that's really cool. Um, cool, man. Well, you know, when you get done with that, when he's done being tormented, I'd love to see it. Um, I'll, 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 you'll be the first person I send it to. Jorge, Kyle, hope you guys are doing well. Yo, what's up? What up? What up? Um, how's your day going, Jorge? Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, I'm just uh at this coffee shop before training in a couple hours and then uh got this going on so pretty good so far good stuff good stuff cool man well guys i think we have pretty much everyone in here so uh we can go ahead and uh get started um so i did um so i did answer i think pretty much everybody in the general tab um Jorge, did you get a chance to see some of my responses or no not yet uh yeah, I briefly looked over it on the way here. Uh cool. gotcha. Okay. So we can run through these one by one if you'd like, or if you have a specific one you want to tackle, we can go into a specific one. Uh no specific, we can just do one on one. I mean one okay. by one pretty much. Sure. So is am I understanding this correctly? We're like you're saying a lead, somebody becomes a lead and you want to get them on a, a Google Excel sheet. Is that what you're saying? Say that one more time and cut off. So for point one, your question was like, is there an automation uh, for when somebody becomes a lead to get them into Google sheet? Um, yeah. If, if uh, I don't know if there's an uh, something in go high level, Mason, is there something in go high level for this? Or is this like a Zapier thing? Zapier. I know what you're talking about too. You're saying like when a lead comes in from go high level, it goes to a Google sheet, right? Yeah. Yeah. But... yeah. I think you have to use Zapier for that, but I can, I mean, I can double check, but I'm like 99% sure you have to use Zapier for that. But I guess I, uh, like, okay. what, what problem are you trying to solve by, by putting out a Google sheet though? Yeah. So my client already has a, uh, a lead tracker that they've kind of built a system for. And mine was pretty much redundant as far as like, it was almost pretty much the same thing. And oh. so streamlining the process of them, instead of going to like multiple locations to check who's coming in or what's going on, I just want to consolidate everything into one. But the one that's uh, all the staff members are already looking at on a day-to-day -day basis. So I wanted to get the leads from go high level directly into that uh, Google Sheet. I got gotcha. you. Um, I can look into it for you, but I'm pretty sure you might have to use Zapier. And if that's the case, I can show you how to do that too. If you want me to show you how to do that. Okay. Yeah. If uh, yeah, just point me towards the direction. If it's something simple, I can take care of it. If it's a little bit more complex, then I'll ask for help. It's not okay. super, yeah. It's not super complex, and I, I would say like everybody that's in here like should for sure like learn how to use Zapier because you're going to use it in so many facets, not just yes, you're going to use this down the road in so many different ways. So important. It's not. And I it's, guess it's not that difficult, honestly. I was going to say the follow up question to that would be: I know that Go High Level has already a bunch of things uh, integrated within it. When would you use Go uh, Zapier versus Go High Level? Like, other than just this situation. Um, I, I really don't use Zapier that much myself, but you can, I thought it was really cool. I saw this the other day where you can integrate Zapier with like Slack. So when you complete a certain task or like say you move a certain person to like an opportunity, you can like ping someone in Slack to do something, if that makes sense. So if you have like gotcha. a teammate, you have like a client success manager and you see like someone fills out a form and it's like after they fill out like a check-in form or something along the lines of that then it alerts someone to like check it off and see what they wrote or responded to it in that then like i could see that being beneficial but i mean that's just like a super weird scenario that you've probably never heard of or most likely will never use but that's something that you can do but gotcha i guess the the real question is that would it be worth it at this point or is it just better if i just go in there and do a magnet I think there's two different types of people. There's types of people that are like simple shit 
like Koshik, like his spreadsheets and stuff like that. And then there's people like like love automations and stuff like that. Um, I'm an automations guy. Koshik's a, a spreadsheet guy, right? Um, I think, in my opinion, I would keep things simple. I would think I would keep things as simple as humanly possible. Okay, I got you. So, I guess I'll explore a little bit because to me, it seem, it, see, it sounds simple to just like instead of dealing with all that, just literally just upload it directly to their system. That seems a simple way to me. Yeah, I think I think if you just did what they were doing, and then after you have a couple different clients and you kind of see like what the bottlenecks are, or in your onboarding, make them reliant on your system. So they have to do whatever the hell you say instead of being like, okay, for this person, I'm going to create his app. And then for this person, I'm going to do this. Or for this person, I'm going to do this. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they're, they're the only ones who have this system already built in. It's the gym that I used to work at. So like I'm already familiar with it. It's kind of what I based off my current sheets, track the leads off of. So that's why I just, I feel like it made more sense to go this way because I'm already way more comfortable with it. Yeah. But okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, you should do that. And then, I mean, you'll get more comfortable with Go High Level anyway, and you're probably going to move over to that. But I guess it's if it, like a one-off client, then yeah, just do whatever. Okay, gotcha. Does that help with that one, uh, Jorge? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then I'll remind you to just uh, to send me the stuff about the Zap, the Zap thing again, just so I can look more into it. I got you. Cool. Yeah, to answer that. Thank you. So regarding the second one, this is your, your, I assume you're referring to like, you whenever you get a lead where your client, you know, when they don't show up, you're trying to figure out how to mitigate that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So walk me through. So what I was saying is like, walk me through A to Z, like to the best of your abilities, what happens from the moment somebody sees an ad, like walk me through what they experience. They click on an ad, they get this automation, they get this manual response, like walk me through their experience. Gotcha. So, yeah, so they click on the ad. They uh, they get a questionnaire. There's no landing page, just the questions on Facebook. They fill out the information. And then from there at the last step, it says, uh, lead me to the booking calendar. So on the last step, it leads them directly to the booking calendar. From there, once they get all that information filled out and they go to the booking calendar, they get an automated text message from me saying, hey, this is the gym. Just uh, saw that you filled out our application. Here's, this is an automated message. Uh, let me know what really days quick. work best for you. Yeah. Sorry, Jorge. Just before before you, I, I I missed something. So they click on the ad, they fill the stuff out, and then there's a hey, here's a link to the website to actually get booked in, like a calendar, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so do they receive the message from you once they book, before they book? Like when when do they receive the automation? So they receive the automation as soon as they submit the Facebook form. Okay. So whether they book or not, doesn't matter. Okay. Got it. So sorry. Continue. Yeah. So after they book, I'm over here on my automation. So after they book, they get the message saying, Hey, make sure you click the link to book your free class. And then it, it's another link to the same booking calendar. And then our team member will get in touch with you shortly. And then you'll opt out message, etc. And then that's the first automated message. We all get a notification on our side as far as staff members of who gets, uh, who just opted in. And then I go in manually and I text them, hey, I just saw that you booked a, a spot or I just saw that you opted in. Um, did you want to book a spot right now? I can give you a calendar really quick just so I can get like a, a little bit more feedback from them and kind of actually talk to them. Okay, pause. So what I'm hearing is that they get an automation where it's like, hey, make sure you click book and then mm -hmm. also they receive a manual so it's the same thing you're hitting them twice with the same kind of messaging yeah okay. so then they get the automated they get the manual text from me and then usually if they don't book on their on their own right away they respond to my text message saying hey yeah i was super interested or either like a couple questions like where is this at where are you located or i can't come in can i schedule for next week and so then from there you're saying that's the human interaction we're having that conversation or the automation they're having that conversation. Okay. The human interaction is them either asking me a question or saying uh, that they can make it in to send them the link. 
Okay. Okay. And And then, then what? and then once they, once they're down, I send them the link, they book on their own time. And then once they book, we get a notification on our staff saying, Hey, this guy just booked just a heads up. Um, He's coming in at this date, and that's it. Then they get an automated message saying, thanks for booking. Uh, here is exactly the location, Google Maps picture where it's going to be, uh, what time it's going to be at, a uh, link to add it to your Google Calendar, and then a Google Maps link. So it leads up directly to the gym. And then uh, three days before, they get another notification saying, this is automated. Another automated message saying, hey, just wanted to give you this uh, reminder this is where it's going to be at. Same thing pretty much, but just three days before. The day before, they get another automated message uh, acting as me saying, hey, it's Jorge here. I just wanted to say that I'm excited to meet you tomorrow. Uh, don't forget to bring a T-shirt and a water bottle. And then from there, they either reply, they say reply C to confirm. They reply or they don't reply. There's no automated automation happening after if they reply with a C or if they don't. It's just more so that we can get a, a confirmation confirmation message from them. And then the day of, they get another reminder three, five hours before and three hours before. And okay. then that's it. That's solid, bro. Like, that's really solid. Um, I'm curious, like, why you do, before you dive deeper, I'm curious why you do, why you have the automation that tells them to book a on the account as well as, like, you manually messaging them. Why do you have, why do you handle with both of those? So my thought process was, so I got this from Jay because he has the automation, but then he has an AI bot doing the manual texting. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking like, instead of doing the AI bot, I, I don't have that right now. I'll just handle it. And that way I can kind of get a feel for them and say that, hey, because I, I know what questions to ask them. Like questions that I would, I would normally ask when I'm there and I'm, I'm meeting them for the first time, I would ask them there just so I can get a feel of like how serious they are and like, what type of uh if they have any background or like what kind of cell is it going to be and so that's why I, I do the manual in addition to the automation okay that that was so if you're doing it for that reason that makes sense so what you're saying to me is like you're just collecting data and you're just learning right now if that's the case that's fine um i would say and so as you can see i wrote down here look into ai so i don't know if uh i'm on this here uh is i'm on here He's not here right now, but um, so maybe when Aman is here, if you remind me, uh, Jorge, we can maybe have a conversation with Aman and he can share a little bit about what he does, but he does something yeah. very similar to you. The difference is literally it's pretty much the exact same thing. The difference is instead of him doing manual and uh, automation, it's just the AI. Okay. So it's really cool. It's like somebody books it out or somebody opts in. AI hops in, has a conversation with them, and they tell them, hey, we have this time available. The person says yes or no, whatever. And then once that happens, like the business owner or somebody from the team then manually comes in at the last step to actually get them booked into the calendar. So be like, okay, great. Here's a link. And then they collect a deposit. Right. So it's very similar to, to what you're doing. It's just they're using AI instead of you having automation versus this. So I would say if I'm you, keep doing what you're doing, learn data and start looking to AI. So if I'm you, maybe make a write, write this down if you have something to write on, is reach out to me and, mm -hmm. remind, me and or, yeah, re remind me in our personal thing. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll maybe have a conversation to remind you uh, to speak to Aman. And so you can learn a little bit more about AI and what he's doing. So you can kind of spend the next you know one, two weeks learning more about it. And then by then, hopefully you learn a little bit about AI, you're getting more familiar with the system and then you can combine. And then now you don't have to worry about the automation and two people or in you. And then we just let the AI do it. So that would be my suggestion for that. Um, and then in terms of people like showing up, I guess my, um, I, I guess I would, I, I, my concern is like, what are, are the numbers normal versus not normal? We don't even know if they're normal versus not normal. At least I don't know. So my question to you is like, are you, I would assume you're tracking the number. Uh, you, so you should be tracking the number of leads. I think you should be tracking the number of people that book through the calendar on their own, if it's possible to even do that like on their own display. I want to see how strong that is. Does that make a difference or not? I want to see the people that are not booking through that, but all, then booking through like you reaching out the automation, reaching out. So I want to see how many people like opt in and then book right away versus need to be followed up with and then book. I'd be tracking that. Oh, okay. I'd be tracking both those to see what, what is efficient. 
Um, if, the, if, for example, you're having somebody become a lead and then they're, they're like never book on the calendar, it's like, we can get rid of that step. You know what I mean? If that, I don't can, know you, can you explain that one more time? So, the, so track two things, the main thing where it's like they book on their own time. And then once when they book with me after text going back and forth. Yeah. So if I were to draw it out, it's like, there's the ad and then somebody becomes a lead. And then after they become a lead, they can book on their own or there's a, uh, a manual booking from you. Mm -hmm. Right. So once they become a lead, do they go in and they automatically book on their own and what you'll come to find, I don't know, like, is anybody booking on their own? Are people book on their own or no? Yeah. Oh, are they? Okay. Uh, what, what percentage of people would you say are, are booked on their own? I'd say maybe 60%, 50%, just a rough guess. And so when I say book on their own, what I mean by that is like right on Facebook, right? They answer yeah. the question. And when it says, hey, go to this page now to book, they do that. I'm not talking about like receiving the text message. I'm talking about like right on Facebook. You're saying that about 50, 60% do this? Yeah. So just straight automation, I would say 50 to 60%. So I'm not saying automation. What I'm saying is like right on Facebook forms. So they click on an ad. Mm -hmm. They answer some questions. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. From there, it leaves them with the, hey, here's the counter page. I'm not talking about any text automations. I'm talking about that. Like, do from there or no? Uh, that'd be a harder thing to guess because I don't know if it's, because it's the same booking link. So like, it gets sent ASAP, right? So I don't know if it's they did it from there or if they did it from the actual text message that they got. Right. So that's what I was asking. So so there's basically three ways. So somebody becomes a lead and they go into the next step, which is to book. There's another step, which is like you have a manual conversation. Then you have an automated conversation. So there's three ways that you're getting them booked. One is mm -hmm. through the form. One is you having going back and forth and then booking. And then one is the automated uh, text booking. And so the question becomes, is this relevant or not? So what I was trying to say is like, if this is not relevant, well, then we can just kind of get rid of it and not even like stress about this. That's what I was trying to get at. Mm -hmm. And so then it's like, okay, now what happens? So I would be tracking this. So it sounds like it's not possible to track this and that's fine. Um, I would definitely be tracking how many people, you know, are interacting with like the manual. Like, so you message them, let's say you message 10 people out of those 10 people, how many respond? And then out of them, how many book? Uh, the automated, how many respond and how many book, like I would be drilling that as well. I'd be keeping track of that data. Um, and then booking and then, you know, somebody books and then, you know, they show up. And then I would talk about like who actually buys, right? So I'd be tracking all of this stuff, if that makes sense. And then you can kind of, from there, we can kind of see where the bottleneck is and, and where to take it. Um, so the question becomes, this is, this is the question. So we book and then show up. So what you're asking about is this. So you're saying, Koshik, how do I increase this? So I guess my question to you is like, what percentage of people show up according, like just off the top of your head? I can actually show you. The show up rate is, is uh, averaging 40%. Bro, that's not bad at all. Yeah. So you're, you're, so, I mean, you know, you want to have a conversation with Jay to confirm, but like based off of what I'm hearing, that's not bad at all. Okay. I will second that. I don't think 40 is bad at all. Yeah, like half the people showing, bro. That's like fucking awesome, bro. Like Mason, what was your show up to uh the um for the in-person person? Yeah. Mine was like 50 to 60, maybe, but that was like high. 50, 60 is really high. Yeah. And so what I've noticed is that when you have in-person stuff, people show up, and then from there, there's like a 90% in terms of people actually buying. What percentage of people are, are buying? Um, I'd say of those, probably like 10, 20%. Okay. So this can be improved maybe. And again, if I'm you, if you have someone taking notes on, you want to have a, a conversation with Jay about this number, show up rate. And then you want to have a conversation in terms of what percentage of people book. Okay. Very important. So if you're not making notes, please make notes of that. That's one, a conversation you definitely want to have with Jay. Mm -hmm. now, here's something else I, I want to share with you. Something that's really cool that me and Aman uh, have been working on. So there's a training. And I'll send that to you. And this is what like Jay isn't doing. And this is what you can be doing. So we have, so there's like this medical spa, this agency owner. And so he's like, what I'm like adamant on is like people figuring out like, 
the way I figured out like the six figure in six weeks, like free video commercial offer or Alex Hermosi's like six week challenge is like, it's very like the back end sales process is where the mastermind is. Like, it's like, okay, somebody comes in for this free 16 week thing and then they take the money. And then at the end of the eight weeks, they don't, you know, refund, they upsell on like that's the mastery. And so I believe what they would do is, so this is really cool just for everybody. It's like, so they would leave with a Botox thing. Okay, Botox, all, all of it for the medical spa, Botox. And then when you click on the ad, the ad will tell you you need at least two treatments. You need at least two treatments, but this is for like one treatment for some discount. And then so prepare to have a convo about these other ones. So basically right away, they understand they're going to be upsold. And so then when they come in, they have the Botox procedure. And then after they have the Botox procedure, there's basically like a membership or there's like some um some kind of like vacation package where like they get a vacation they get all this crazy stuff and so this is like this is like um this is like uh what's the word a decoy and i could be messing this up i'm not entirely sure like i, I could be messing up the exact setup i'm pretty sure i I'm pre i know for sure every starts with built talks there could be a medium ticket thing here i'm not sure i don't think there is i'm pretty sure it just goes to these two options what they're trying to do is they're trying to sell this membership and so I think right now it's like there's this membership for like $199 a month. And what they're trying to do, the change they're trying to make is like instead of $199 a month, they're trying to do like a paid in full. So there's like a membership and then there's a paid in full and then this is a decoy. And so this is the secret sauce. This is the magic sauce. This is the this is what makes the ads work. So I bring this up because people come in for the free thing. After they come for the free thing, he sells them on a class that's, you know, what, like $200 a month or whatever. And this is what I'm saying. This is where like the secret sauce is. Like if you can figure out this shit where it's like the class is for 200 or something else for some high ticket thing. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know how like to figure out, like, I don't know what that is, but like, if you come up with something different, now your results are going to shit all over Jay's. Cause I promise this is all Jay is doing. He has to figure out some unique way to sell some high ticket thing. Um, like you sell some high ticket thing where you say, hey, for three months, we're doing, you know, this technique and then we're going to do this technique for the next three uh, quarters. You know what I mean? And so pay in full and you get the special thing or you do the $200 per month or some decoy offer. Right. So, again, I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff up out there, but like that's like what's going to make your ads be extremely profitable. Your goal is if you want to write something else down, your goal is how do I help the business owner collect as much cash up front as possible? That's it. As much cash as possible up front. That's the number one thing. Because if you can help the business owner, I don't know what the cost per acquisition, let's say it's 200 bucks and you get the business owners to, to spend 200 and they, you know, that, you know, somebody pays like two grand. Okay. When you ask them to re-up, like, bro, you help them sell a few of those in the, in, in month one, month two, they're staying with you for like six, seven months. And then if you have yeah. some kind of mastermind thing on the back end that you want to sell for even higher ticket, now you have that as well. You have the ability, but if you if you're spending two hundred bucks to acquire somebody, and the average person is paying 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 two hundred bucks, you're at break even if not losing money. So how do you help them collect as much cash as possible up front? So, anyways, I'm going off tangent here, but like I feel like you know, based off of your numbers that I'm seeing, again, speak with Jay to confirm that your number, like what your numbers are, they look fine to me. The only thing I'm seeing is like the conversion in terms of people buying the the thing. And so if 10% of people are buying, it's like, I don't know if that's high or low, but maybe those are the people that are super bought in and those people, maybe they would go for a higher ticket package. Yeah, that makes sense. So well, it's not so much of the, the show up and the booking as it is as, as uh, solving the, the buying issue, the buying problem. That's and the just trying to increase that. What I've seen is when it comes to gyms, when people show up in person, again, Mason, you can share yours, but like when people show up in person, it's like a 90% conversion rate at gyms. If people drive out there, they have that emotional investment. If they're really like going through a song and dance, like that is like a 90%. Like Mason, what was your conversion rate? Uh, it you was remember? hot. Well, yeah, no, it was, it was, I don't, I can't, I don't remember exactly, but it was over 70. And it, I mean, we were selling higher end packages too, but I think if someone's like, Here's like, here's the thing. I'm guessing, Jorge, what you're doing is you're doing like a like trial classes, and then at the end you're trying to sell them a big package. Am I right or am I wrong? Uh, so, more or less, it's a trial, and then we sell them on a month to month, or there's a higher ticket, which is four months up front. Okay, so 
here's the thing with doing something like that. Like that's out of your hands in terms of like what you can do, right? Like you can provide suggestions, but the thing is if like you don't have a dialed in journey from like them becoming a trial student, I think that's what you'd say in, in jujitsu, but like a trial student to like, you know, someone that's there full time, then it's really, really hard. Like, I think we're solving for the wrong problem right here because like I'm, I'm thinking I'm looking at your numbers and, and I know like she's kind of been pressing, like asking, you know, lots of different questions to kind of see what the issue is. But like to me, that is the biggest issue. And that, that, that's the thing that needs to be changed in order to move the needle for you. So I think what I would do is I would try to strategize with that gym owner and just try to figure out like, like what does the process look like at the end of the trial period? Like, are they coming and doing their classes and like no one approaches them and asks them like, yo, like, what do you want to do? That's and if, it. That's like it. it's, it's either that, or it's like, you have to offer them something good. So like, for example, like, you have to you have to dial in the exact same process that you do with every single person right so it's mm -hmm. like maybe the first day like i don't know jujitsu is as good as you jorge right but it's like let's say like the first week is like i don't know like triangles right and then the next week is like arm bars right and then it's like at the end of that you're like yo you did really good with your triangles and your arm bars um and they're like oh yeah dude i loved it i love this that this and that it's like okay now what you got to offer is like yo, we're going to teach you how to do leg locks and this and that and this and that. And these are all the things that are waiting for you to come. And just so you let you know, in those two weeks time period, you've learned these two things, but there's so many other skills you can learn. So what we do is we have this four month package. And not only are you going to, are we going to dive deeper in how to do the two things that you already know how to do, but we're going to add this, 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 and this. Are you ready to rock and roll? Dude, they'll eat that mm -hmm. right up. But I bet you like the gym owner isn't saying shit like that. And I think that's what's eating you up. What? Yeah what mason said in terms of them showing like that was it and, and we'll dive a little bit deeper in terms of that and i'll give you an example my question to you is this is like what like, yeah so the main thing i wanted to ask mason was like what is this conversion rate i showed i told you 90 percent for average gym owners mason is showing you 70 percent. so that goes to show i'm giving you two examples of like high conversion rate medical spas people that show up it's really high it's like 60 70 percent that people buy stuff if not even higher than that when people show up in person usually <laughs> They're, it's, it's, it, they're, they're paying. And so the fact that it's only 10%, that means that there's something going on with that sales, the sales journey. They're not, they're most likely not selling good enough. They're, they're the game of chess. And it's not even, it's probably not like, there's like two parts to selling. One part is like your energy, your conviction. The other part is like the game of chess. Like step one, you say this, step two, you say this, you put them in the, a mousetrap. You probably don't have that mousetrap down. So my question to you is, talk to me about that mousetrap. What, what are they doing? Somebody comes in, walk me through what they experienced inside the establishment. Yeah, so since I was there, like actually doing the selling, like I'm I'm in the, I'm boots on the ground. So I did exactly like the whole process, right? So they come in and I would greet them at the door. And as soon as they come in, I'm already ready, you know, so they're not going in. They're like, oh, what am I doing? Where do I go? I'm in there. I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, I saw that you, uh, like, what's your name? I'm Jorge. Like, oh, I'm this so-and-so. Like, oh, cool. Yeah, I talked to you over the phone or, you know, we texted back and forth about you coming in. You know, uh, glad you made it here early. Let me uh, let me get you settled in and then uh, we'll get you onto the match, right? Okay, cool. So I give them the tour real quick at the gym. I tell them where to go, all that stuff. And then after the tour, I walk them back to the main area. And I basically say, okay, so go ahead, change up into whatever you're going to wear. After that, I'm going to walk you through the whole process of the class and kind of give them the structure of the class, how it's going to go down. And then after I break it through with them, I kind of ask them a couple questions like, hey, so like, well, what brought you in here? You know, like, why are you doing this? What are you, what are you looking for? Do you have any experience? Like, you know, get answers from there. And then right before class starts, I explain to them, okay, so this is how it's going to work. Uh, after class, I'm going to pull you out to the side. We're going to meet in the back. And then I'm going to talk to you about, you know, kind of your goals, your experience. And then, uh, like, as far as pricing and your schedule and, you know, get to all the boring stuff, right? And you're like, cool, cool, no problem. And then after class, so when I lead them into class, I introduce them to the coach. I get them partnered up with somebody who has more experience so that they're not in the blind, leading the blind. And then... Throughout the class, I can see that he's kind of buttering him up or whoever the lead is, trying to give him extra attention. After class, I pull him to the side. Like, hey, what's up? You know, so I was class. It was good. Cool. Go ahead, take a breather, take a shower, get some water, whatever you want to do. When you're ready and changed up, I'll meet you in the back. Once they meet me in the back, then we go through the whole process of like, okay, cool. So, you know, talk to me about it. What was your initial thoughts, expectations? Did they meet them? Did they exceed really them? Quick. Really quick, before you continue. 
the people that meet you in the back, what percentage of them are showing? Is 100% of them or less than 100%? Yeah, most like 99%. Yeah, because I get them after class. I'm like, cool, you ready to go? Like, yeah, but you got to go somewhere or you got you got time? I'm like, no, I got time. I'm like, cool. Let's go ahead and meet in the back. I'll meet you over there. I'm going to get my laptop. And then when I get them to my laptop, we're sitting down and I ask them those questions, right? How's class? Uh, do you have any thing that stood out to you? What did you learn? Just, you know, ask them about their experience. And then they talk about their experience. Then after that, I basically ask them again, like trying to reiterate. So what brought you in here? Why are you doing this? Why? Do, what do you want to do with this? Uh, what are your goals? And then from there, they tell me that I'm like, okay, cool. Make a little chit-chat about that. And then I ask them, okay, cool. So what's your schedule like? You said that like, you're working right now or you're a student, trying to get a feel for them that they can afford this. And then they say, yeah, I'm working. Oh, yeah, I'm a student here. I'm like, cool. So your schedule is pretty much like, uh, sounds like you're pretty busy, right? Like how many times are you thinking? We have this option. They tell me I can either come, you know, twice a week or I'm pretty much free every day. Then I tell them, okay, cool. So uh, here's the schedule for what we do. We pretty much, it's straightforward. It's two times a week, three times a week, or unlimited. And then depending on what you want to do and how many times you want to come in, it pretty much is a one size fit for you. Right? Then they answer, okay, cool. You know, uh, I can make it for sure this day and this day because I'm showing them the calendar at this point. And I'm showing them, okay, all the ones in the green slots are the ones that you can actually come into at the beginning. And then of these, how many times can you come in? Because we have classes seven days a week. They say that they can come in, for example, like two times a week. My perfect. So Monday and Tuesdays will be your days. And they're like, yeah, I can for sure make those days. I'm like, cool. So then really the next step would be just to uh, get you set up with your uniform, get you sized up. I walk you through the whole process of what we're going to do, how to register for classes. And then I just need the card that you want to use. And then from there, it's either like, all right, cool, let me go get it. Or... They might hit me with some objections. Okay. So question before we continue, um, what is the conversion rate? So it sounds like, you, I mean, obviously this is the position that you've had with that gym for a long time. Now you're just like running ads and you're converting those people as well. When it comes to warm traffic, people that are not coming from ads, what percentage were you closing? Uh, let me see that. I can pull that up real quick. I'd say probably about like, yeah, like 50, 60%. So 50, 60 versus 10. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this sales process that you have, I would assume that it was taught to you by whoever runs the spot. He's like, hey man, here's where, hey, here's how I do it. Here's how to do it. And, and that's, that's pretty much what you're doing yeah or did you kind of create this yourself no it was uh it was passed down but i added a couple things so what i'm hearing is like it sounds like a very like traditional sales process like very yeah. true there's no like specific there's no like unique offer there's no unique thing that you're throwing in there like there's no bait and switch there's no there's none of that stuff here so here's an example there's a guy I met uh, a while ago. What he does is he like does like, you know, these training sessions where, he, you know, people are working out and doing things, jumping jacks, whatever. Right. The thing about him is he had like a tension band. So that was like his like workout stuff is like every single exercise he did, every single workout routine, everything he did was like with the tension band. And so that was fundamentally part of his process. Like, for example, you go to a gym and somebody does, only does dumbbells or only does barbells. Like that's his mechanism. Right. And so what would happen is he would get people in to do a free thing. And then at the very end of it, he would come up to them. He'd say, hey, you know, how was it? All that stuff. Um, they said it was good. It's like, okay, great. Um, what I'd like to offer you really quick is if you um, buy the band, here's a trick. Again, you got to be, this is what I'm trying to get across to you is like, there's always a trick, a psychological trick or something. He said, would you like to buy the band? If you buy the band right now, I'm going to give you a discount on the three month. If you don't buy the band, then that's fine. You can pay regular month to month if you'd like. Why does this work? Because he knew that if somebody if somebody was in, they're going to want to get the discount. They're going to want to get the ban. So you would get people to buy the ban and then get them a discount for three months. And then within three months, he would get them sold, buy, bought in to continue to work with them. If they didn't buy the ban, he knew pretty much they weren't going to work with them. So it was kind of a trick. 
it was like a, a thing it, like instead of going from the free thing to like hey you want to do a three month or one year with me now it's like hey do you want to do you want to get this band it's a discount if you buy this for a discount we'll give you a discount of three months or like if you buy this pay in full then we'll give you this other thing does that make sense so it's like i feel like there needs to be something like that when it comes to paid ads there's got to be something unique there's got to be a unique mechanism because yeah that that's that's what's burning my head um I think it could be, I, I feel like what you got going on is obviously like very, it's, it works for warm traffic. It works for warm traffic. Mm -hmm. The warm traffic, they came in, they're already ready to buy. They were already ready to buy. When it comes to cold traffic, we got to dangle a carrot in front of them to get them to buy. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? We got to dangle a carrot. We got to do something else. It's got to be, yeah. like you can't use the same sales process. Gotcha. So when that it comes makes to sense. That, and so maybe that's the thing that seems like that's what it clicked for you. When it comes to regular people, it's important to understand you got regular people, warm traffic. They came in already ready to buy. The ones that are going to buy are already bought. That's why it's the high, it's such a high conversion rate. When it comes to cold traffic, they're coming in just to check it out. They're not ready yeah. to buy. These people are ready to buy. These people are not ready. To buy. So when these people come in, you got to create a knee jerk reaction for these people. Like, holy shit, I'm getting this amazing deal. I did not expect this. That's the way I did not expect it. Fuck, let me take this up. And so that's what's happening in this case. That's what happens with Hormozy and a 16 week challenge. That's what happens when it comes to a free video commercial offer. Look, I did not expect them to offer ads and funnels and all this stuff. I just expected a free video. This all makes sense. There's kind of like a bait and switch. There's gotta be some kind of mechanism like that when it comes to paid ads, in my opinion, to increase your conversion rate from 10% to 50, 60%. So if I'm you, I'm working on two things. I'm working on increasing this and I'm working on figuring out how to collect as much cash as possible. If you figure those two things out, Jorge, I'm telling you right now, bro, if you figure out those two things and you figure out a way to create course material and systematize it, bro, you got a seven for your agency. If you just mm -hmm. figure that out, yeah. I'm serious. If you figure that out, is that making sense, bro? It does make sense. It's just, now it's just a little overwhelming. Like, fuck, how do I do this? Do they, do you only do one like trial class or hey, is what it sounds like? What do you mean? Like yeah. how long does your like trial last for? Is it like a day pass type of thing or? Yeah, the offer is just one free class. Uh, yeah. So you, I guess you'd have to just like dial in specifically everything that happens that day. Like mm -hmm. I don't know if there's like favorite moves that make you feel good or or something <laughs> like, but I would figure all all of that stuff. It's gotta be gotcha. a, gotta be a dialed in process, like Mason saying every single time. Like if, for example, yeah, there's, there's gotta be, I mean, I, I want to say like, I feel like if somebody were to come in and there's like a, a cardio day versus like a weightlifting day or whatever, like that is a variance in terms of that process. And that's that what makes it. Yeah. That's, like that would psychologically affect the sale. Yeah. Like I could see, I could see you like teaching someone how to do like a leg lock, right? And then you're like, okay, now you do it to me, right? And then they go to try to do it to you. And then like you catch them and you put them in something. You're like, ah, but I didn't teach you this yet. And they're like, damn, this is really frustrating. And it's really cool. Like I could see something like that working. You know what I mean? Instead of like hyping up the entire time, like teach them something and then reverse it back to them and then be like, yo, want me to show you how I did that? And they'll be like, what the hell? And then they'll just keep when you doing it. Like see what I'm saying? Yeah. When you mentioned that, that's uh, so some context about the class. So the classes, the fundamental classes that the leads are coming into, whether they're fa uh, pay uh, Facebook paid ads or just regular off the website, it's a three week, sorry, no, a three month program where it basically like runs through like the fun self-defense fundamentals to get you through like ready to like defend yourself in the street, but also be able to know all the moves to get to the high level, right? So it's basically just like a real fundamental course uh, there was another way of like actually that we were thinking about before. It's just going to have to like kind of ch change the infrastructure a little bit as far as like how they, uh, how they offer the classes where it's like, we could do a private with just the Facebook lead. What right? if you, like a, real quick, pause real quick before I forget this. I don't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. I know. I don't know if this is worth exploring. I don't know if it would work, but I remember with uh rich, one thing that he did was he did a get tattoo now pay later. Do you remember that? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's something worth exploring. Like, I don't know what your objections are, but like, maybe that's something that is worth ex exploring. I just want to throw that out there. Like, that's what I mean. Like there's gotta be some unique sauce in there. It's gotta be something different that people don't expect. 
you're missing. The, I think what you're missing, like, uh, you you're not you're sending them to a trainer to complete the session, right? Then they're coming back to you. Yeah. Something that you may want to test is having that trainer send or sell the thing, or you be the entire person throughout the entire process. That you mentioned like that, that. That's actually uh, because I've done that is, before. Is well, Go ahead. The thing is, as well, is like you don't know what the hell they're doing. So maybe like the 10 percent of people that are being sold to, like some like the trainer says something super specific to them that resonates. You just don't know what the hell it is. Mm -hmm. How did how did that go? You said you guys did try it. How did that go? And and when you said so, you tried, like, did you do the training and selling, or did they do the training and selling? So I did the training and selling. So there'd be times when I would jump into class, and I would actually be their partner, and I would coach them through it, and I would kind of get into their mind of like what they told me before, and I found that I just had so much ammo for the sale that I'm like, yo, like you did awesome, like this, this, and that, right? And I just that made the sale much smoother, right? So. That was something that could be wow. explored as well. So did you but, move away from that though? Yeah, because the thing is, if the, we have multiple leads coming in in one day, it's, gotcha. it was harder what to was get the, in there. And then also the with the... Uh, what was the closing that, rate when you did it? Uh, that'd be kind of hard to track. I'd say maybe upwards of like 80%. Like I didn't do it that many times. Well, there's, just the okay. times there's your answer, dude. Your answer is you got to teach people whatever the hell you did <laughs> to the other people. Yeah. The, now, the challenge with that would be it's just that position itself, it's they have that position, but they're also on staff doing other things. They're also like, you know, folding towels, doing laundry, cleaning, uh, taking care of other things at the same time while there's class going on. So that might be the, the next challenge. But this is something I'll bring up to, uh, to my client. On to like what I think would help. Uh, that like I could totally see you coming in, them having an interaction with that person, then coming back to you, and it's like the the level of respect is not there. Like they see you as a sales rep. The moment they hop yeah. in, like they see you as like a chill dude. Hey man, we're gonna have a conversation. They're not thinking much of it. Then they're in the zone, getting experience from that person, and then you come in, kind of like, and it feels very at the very beginning. It probably doesn't feel like a sales rep, but towards the tail end, it probably feels like a sales rep because you haven't built any emotional connection. You haven't built anything with them. Yeah. And that's what matters for these paid ads guys. These guys are already, they're already sold. They're already to buy. So maybe I, there's a way where, and again, this is, this is why, this is the reason I'm saying it's a seven figure agency, bro, is because you're revolutionizing the way the industry is. Like you're literally changing the industry. So maybe like, for example, again, like Mason is saying, is like the way you run your paid ads is you have a slot every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or every single Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at this time slot. And those are all the leads. And you do a session with all five of them. And you try to sell all five of them all at once, for example. I don't know if that's making any sense to you. It's kind of like a webinar. Every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're having like a webinar where you're teaching some stuff for an hour. And then at the end of it, you're selling everybody all at once. Again, I'm not saying that's the right move. I'm just trying to give you an example here. So yeah, it's like reorganization, like reorganizing the, the potential business. I'm not saying it's the right move. You know, I don't know if that's the right move. I'm just throwing stuff yeah. out there. I mean, when but you mentioned that, it's uh, that this is all something that I've had a conversation about with my client, with Adam, and he's like, "Yeah, man, like to be honest, this is uh, these are all good ideas. It's just it wouldn't be able to happen overnight. It had to be like a lot of like major changes in the infrastructure and like uh, instructor schedules and all that stuff." But he's like, "To be honest, the way that we do the sales process now, like exactly what you said. He said it's pretty much the same traditional way that." every person in the martial arts industry is doing. So these are some ideas that we, we already talked about this too. So it's like crazy that you bring this up because I'm like, man, these are the same thing that you guys mentioned. I mentioned to him, like, Hey, like when I went over there and I trained with them and then I sold them, I find that it was way easier than just like meeting him afterwards. Kind of like, okay, who the hell are you? Like you just some dude trying to sell me versus I have respect and authority because I train, I'm a higher belt, but also because, you know, I was helping you. I mean, if I were you, I would have a conversation with them. I would maybe try to even negotiate a higher percentage. I don't know if they'd be cool with that, but like, 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 hey, be like, hey, dude, look, I'm going to run the ads. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a little bit more extra work. I'm going to figure this thing out for you. My request is that you pay me a little bit more because I'm putting in the work because this may or may not pay off. But just to cover you know, my time expenses of figuring this out for you. I don't know if he'd be cool with that. I don't know if you have a relationship with them like that. But I I I'm I, I agree with Mason, and I think that this could be this could be the game changer. That's the bottleneck, bro. I'm looking at the entire funnel. The bottleneck is the sales level. That's it. 
and it should be higher. Yeah. I guess the first thing I could do is uh, like immediately is just have a meeting with him and tell him about this and just kind of like we can implement like with the next lead, the next Facebook lead, whoever's on staff, just to like jump in with them and see how that helps. Yeah. And and obviously this call is being recorded. If you feel like you can pull from it specific parts, timestamp it to help you. I don't, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there as well. Whatever you need. I would definitely, say, if I were you, I would push him. Yeah. That. Yeah. Cause another thing too, it's cause at this gym particular, they're staff members, right? So it's not the owner who's doing most of the teaching and the, and the training and the selling. There's actual positions. So the instructors have their own instructor program. They're just solely focused on instructing. Then there's the sales reps who are also kind of the ambassadors who help out around the gym, who also clean and stuff. But those are the people who are selling. So we're not always having contact with the people at in the, during the training session. And so that might there might be a disconnect there versus my other clients they're also teaching like they're they're not just teaching the classes but they're at the end of the day they're selling too so there's a they have more of that connection with the lead yeah it's good it's gonna be some work bro it's gonna be some work to figure it out and figure out make it work for you and then not only just work for you but be something that can be used across the industry for other jujitsu business owners um so I, you know we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna need to do some testing bro for sure but i think we're we got something that um is worth exploring i do 100 percent believe by the way that Somebody, they can't pass it off from the trainer to the seller. I do believe it is possible to do that. But I don't, I'm think I'm suggesting that you just try this yourself where you just train and just see what happens. Try it for like one to two months and go ham. Yeah. See how many people you can get in, see how many people you can sell, see how many people you can sell a high ticket thing. And then if there's merit to that, maybe we, we're, we'll we explore that down uh, deeper. Yeah, because I do like that idea. Like it, there was some like, you know, Gears turning when you mentioned like the webinar style where we mentioned before me and Adam had a conversation where like kind of doing a one-on-one -on -one private and then selling, it'd be like a 30 minute session and then sell them at the end. We're just having different time slots for people who are only leads like that. Right. I think it's that like, I remember there was, um, there was a chiropractor I went to, um, the chiropractor you could go in any time and you go in any time they'd speak with you. Uh, somebody would have a consultation with you. And then once a week or twice a week, they would have everybody sit in all at once. And then a chiropractor would do a presentation, try to sell you guys. Does that make sense? So they're being efficient with their time. So every, you can, a lead can hop in whenever, but it's like, it's like a two call close. A lead comes in, somebody has a conversation, looks over their body, says, hey, yeah, I think we can help you. Look, on Tuesday, uh, we'll, we'll probably do the presentation, presentation. So all the leads hop in on Tuesday at 6 p.m. They do a presentation at the very end, sell everybody all at once. So it's like systematizing it as well. Yeah, I just like gave me an idea right now. It's like, okay, the regular classes, the leads come in. And then like you said, two, two call close, have a whole another time slot solely dedicated for the Facebook leads where they can jump in on their own time and be led by the instructor or whoever's teaching. And then just basically have that like a 30 minute session, but then sell them at the end. Yeah, that could be it. Or, and, and so again, uh, there's so much shit to test out and this is where it gets really fun. Um, yeah. and so maybe there's a way where at the end of the, the trial, the first training session, you collect a deposit and give some special bonus training, or maybe you don't even collect a deposit, but you got to get them to show up to that thing. Maybe you say, Hey, look, we're doing a special thing. We don't do this. We do this maybe once a month. And so we're doing this special thing. It's hundred percent free as well. We're going to throw that. So they expect like a free thing. They get two free things. And then at the, at that one, that's when they're sold. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you explore it, explore it, um, explore it. There's different ways. Um, but I, my mind is going to, if I'm being honest with you, here's what I would do. If I'm you again, it takes time. What I would do if I was in your shoes is I would explore, I would confirm what we're talking about right now, which is they come in, you put in the grunt work, you train and you sell them and you yeah. pick up a pattern and you try to figure something like this out. You try to figure out some unique thing, like some high ticket versus mid ticket, and then, you know, get, uh, get trained today, pay later, right? You figure something out to try to collect as much cash up front. You do that. I don't know, 10 people. Then the next step is, okay. I kind of figured out like what needs to be said, what needs to be done. Let's see if I can systematize it where I do all, I do everything all in one. So you do it not instead of the trainer, you do it. You try to get everybody to show up all in one and you train everybody and you try to sell everybody at the end, like a webinar. 
that would be the second level. So it's like, I figured out one-on-one now I'm going to figure out as a group. Now, once you figure it out, now maybe we can do the third thing, which is what you talked about, which is like have a two-step maybe, or maybe we just like stay at the, the, the last one. But I would, main thing I'm trying to get across to you is I would, if I were you, I would start off one-on-one because it's going to be less operational drag, less operational complexity. A lead comes in, you just got to worry about taking care of them. You carve out the time to do that. That's where I would start. So like a private? Yeah. Instead of like jumping into the regular class with them is what you're thinking? Like I, what I'm saying is like, do whatever you did before that got gotcha. to the Great. I don't know what that was. It sounds to okay. me like they hopped in, you had a conversation, you were there the whole time, and then you sold them at the very end. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Whatever, however you did that. That's what I'm saying. Do okay. that. Gotcha. I would start there. And then the next step is if you, and, and so what's going to happen is most likely if you're doing like three of those a day, I don't know how many of those a day you're doing, you're probably going to get overwhelmed. And so the next step is going to be then you finding a time slot where you do like four or five leads all at once. So you do one-on-one -on -one and then you do a time slot. We try to do like four or five all at once. That's how I would probably try to do it if I were you. Gotcha. So, so the one-on-one -on -one and almost the second one would be almost running like a small mini class, like a, like a semi-private with just the leads. Exactly. That's, that's, that's pretty dope actually. I like that too. Yeah. So, yep. I hope this is all helping bro in terms of like giving you ideas to, like, first of all, like we've solved the problem of like where the bottleneck again, speak to Jay to confirm, confirm, even if, if his numbers are 10, 20% at the very end, like just confirm. Um, and uh, that's what I would do. That's what I'm saying in terms mm -hmm. of like what he explained to me, what I learned is the LTV is super low. It's not high enough. They're not charging enough. And that's why he has the churn rate that he does fix that problem. If you fix that problem, um, you're going to be golden. So the main problems are the, the, Increasing the LTV for the clients and then also trying to dial in the sales process. This is your bank account. This is your client's bank account. These are their customers. Your job is simply to figure out how to increase, get the number, increase the number of customers, which is what you're doing right now, Facebook ads, Instagram ads. But then you got to figure out how to charge more than everybody else. Because why this money you're funneling into your client's bank account and from your client's bank account into your bank account. That's all. So this is all you should be focusing on. Making the ads work better. But in your case, the ads are working just fine. It's increasing. It's figuring out the sales part. Yeah. So I know I just went over a lot. Maybe that was extra that I needed to go over. Maybe just to simplify. It's like figure out the sales process. One, increase the conversion rate. And then two, figure out how to maximize cash collected up front. Those two things. That should be your goal. One, increase close rate. Two, increase the cash collected up front. Third, how do you systematize it so that it can be sh shared and taught to everybody else? So increase conversion rate, increase the cash collector up front, and then build, create in a way it's a, the, a system that can be applied to all these other gyms. Mm. What about the, the show up rate? So the show up rate is just confirming with Jay to see if it is actually normal. You don't have to really like tweak out about it. It's what's expected. Versus the main, the bigger issues would be the conversion rate and sales process. The only way you would increase, the only way you could show, increase the show up rate, which again, I don't think is an issue, but you would change up the offer. And so I'll, I'll leave you with this one last thing. If instead of you offering a free class, which sounds like that's gangbusters, that's the thing that you're doing. But if you offer and said, hey, $200 off of a three month thing of jujitsu, now you can ask for a deposit because they're expected to pay. That's the only time mm -hmm. it would work. Gotcha. Your deposit wouldn't work. And so I, I should have answered that question. The reason your deposit wouldn't work right now is because mm -hmm. you're literally doing the exact opposite. What you're doing is you're baiting them with a free thing. The only reason they're clicking is because it's a free thing. And the moment they have a conversation with them, it's like, oh, it's going to cost me. It's like, no, fuck it. I'm out. Your strategy is low barrier to entry. That's what you're doing. Low, You're taking the barrier of entry and you're lowering it. So the moment you have a conversation, you're going to increase it and you're going to turn those people off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. However, if you lead with like $200 off, the barrier to entry is already high. And then when you ask for a deposit, you're just lowering it a little bit. You're actually doing that. Yeah. So that's why that would work. Gotcha. Okay. Anyways, we're talking a lot. I'm sharing a lot of stuff with you. It's not super relevant right now. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's the show up rate. Cool. All right. How are you feeling? You'll, uh, 
a little overwhelmed, but at the same time, there's more clarity where I'm like, okay, I can start to see like the the patterns where I'm okay. I got to just head in that direction. Like as long as I know I'm heading that direction, everything will fall into place. So I, 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 overall, I feel way better though. Thank you. Yeah, that's it, bro. And then in terms of you, I would assume your ads are working fine for your client acquisition. You said cost for booking is about 50 bucks. Yeah. As of now with the new offer, we were about yeah, like 50 bucks and, uh, I've been getting a lot of, not a lot, but I'd say maybe like one out of every four, I'd say 25% of people, they just don't even text me back after like receiving the first messages. Like when I confirm with them, Hey, you know, just uh, want to see if you got a chance to watch the thank you video and they will just completely ghost me. So I don't even call them. Okay. So I think what we can do and, and you know, maybe we can talk about this later um, is, and if you want to message me about this, what I would say is like, if you want to message me what your uh, messaging is, so, Hey, check uh -huh. video versus, and maybe that can be optimized. Okay. And, then, and reach out to me. Maybe I can put you in touch with Aman and he can share with you what he's doing. Cause I'm pretty sure he's not doing that. He's not asking people if they watched a video. What he's saying is like, Hey, can you give me a link to your website so I can dig a little bit more and see how I can help you. That's, that's know. what I meant. I do okay. that one. Okay. Yeah. So if that's the case, then, you know, we just got to keep doing more reps and, you know, we can revisit. I don't think that's enough data yet for us to yeah. anything yet. I've yet to uh, do the thank you videos, or not the thank you videos, like the videos on the calendar page, and then having that as an extra asset. I've yet to do that, so I'm excited to get that going. See mm -hmm. what it, how it change. Where is it? So I have your calendar page. What's your um? What's your thank you page? Thank you page is Matt Master. Hold up, let me pull it up. Put it in the chat right now. Okay, so what you're saying is you, you're going to add what? I meant I was going to add more videos to this. Like, you know how you had that, like, VSL on your... You had, like, a bunch of videos on your thank you page. So I was just going to refer to that video that you made me about adding some stuff. And then also add the video to the calendar page, the booking page. Kind of, like, running them through the system of how everything works. Mm -hmm. What I've come to find is what works really well for the the calendar page is not necessarily that, but like testimonials and results. If you have testimonials and results, that gets people to book better and more than watching the video. Because what happens is they watch the video, they get lazy, they don't watch all the way through, they decide to do something else. It's actual work. It actually causes the brain, like brain power. But if you they just see like results, like, oh, there seems to be some credibility here. Let me go and book a thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense. No, that does. So yeah, if you're going to optimize, uh, I, I would say again, let's let's see how things go for a while. For now, let's get more data in. But if you want to optimize down the road, we'll probably add some testimonials here. And then when it comes to, um, you know, your your thank you page, we'll probably yeah, we can add some more stuff and we can add that that video, the mechanism. Um, but yeah, so you're, you're saying don't add the mechanism video to the calendar page. Yeah, don't add the mechanism to this page. What if I don't have like any testimonials? That's what I'm saying. You got to get some testimonials or, or if gotcha. you message me, I got a solution for you. If you message me, I got another solution for you. Okay. But like right now, I wouldn't worry about that. Like I would only worry about that if your conversion is not like at 10 to 30%. If your conversion for this page is 10 to 30%, I would be chilling. I won't stress about it. Okay. If your conversion is not 10 to 30% within a month's time, then we can look into tweaking this page. And that that's because of the new offer. Yeah, exactly. Because we have the new offer. It's like let's 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 see what the new offer does. If we throw gotcha. in testimonials, then we don't know if it's the new offer. We don't know if the testimony. We have too many two variables now. Oh, okay. For sure. So we want to test this. Let's see how that goes for a while. And then we can optimize this. <laughs> this page, it takes time to optimize this page. It depends on how you're discovering your sales calls go. Gotcha.
Like if people like hop on a discovery call, sales call with you and they're like, dude, I don't understand how the system works. Well, then now that means that you need a video on here that explains how the system works. Gotcha. That makes so you, would it help at all to even make that video at all and just kind of like send that over to them? Yeah. Like that's the most important video, by the way. If when you ask that question, like that is literally, that is literally the most important video you can make. If that is the one you, the, the thing that we use to sell is our mechanism. So mm -hmm. when people hop in and they're purchasing, you know, some of these video marketers it's because I show them, I have a mechanism to get them leads on autopilot through Facebook ads, a free video commercial offer. It's that's my unique mechanism. The free video commercial offer using Facebook ads gets people a bunch of leads. That's my unique thing. It's like, Oh, I've never heard that before. I've never seen that anywhere before. That's actually really cool. That's why they hop in. Mm -hmm. And so just like that, you need a mechanism to show people how you're actually going to help them. Okay. So make that video. And then that would be just a good asset to send them like before the call. So you would drill them everywhere with that on your, on your discovery call. You, uh, so you'd have that video on this page and hopefully they watch it. You would maybe even tweak this video up to go over the mechanism to explain the mechanism, um, on the discovery call, you bring it up like, Hey, did you watch this thing? Okay. Really quick. Let me explain how it works. Also, by the way, can you make sure you watch this after? So you drill them again on the sales call. When they hop in, you literally do a presentation going over again. You drill like four or five times. My same word done it, but that's yeah. what I do. That's what I do. I literally okay. go my thing every single time the ad, the, like I went over this on a, one of our coaching calls. I went over at the ad level. I went over on the uh, counter page. I went over it like four or five times. So people understood how my mechanism works. You have to do that. You have to drill people like multiple times. That's literally the most important thing you could probably do that. And then having testimonials, that's it. If you do that, that'll increase your conversion rate on your sales. Awesome. Um, but yeah, any, any other questions, any other things that you want to go over? Um, Dan, uh, just, just the last thing. So I, I feel like I asked you this like three times already, but just to clarify when I'm going to increase the ad spend for either my clients or for my own ads, make a new ad set and so, then go from like $20, put $24 in the new ad set, or do I go to the current ad set and just change the number? So my, I, I, I recently answered this to you, uh, answer this for you. And I kind of shared my, my, my philosophy, which is that, um, you can basically, you can, uh, you can do both, but like my logic is why fix something that isn't broken. And so if you take an ad set that's already working, so the question is, does the ad set already work or not? If the ad set does not work, then you can try increasing the budget, decreasing whatever, because it's already not working. But if it is working, don't touch it. That's my opinion. Okay. So that's uh, why I say, the first question you want to ask yourself is, is it broken or not? If it's not broken, then my suggestion would be to create a new ad set and then edit the ad set there. You always, here's the other thing for you and everybody else to know. Whenever you have something that's working, this is the thing that's working. This is always your, um, your control. And then you build a new thing a new ad, a new funnel, a new sales process, a new something. This is your control. This is the variable. You never touch the control. You always leave the control as it is because it's always working. You test the new stuff against it to see if it outperforms the old stuff. That makes sense. So I was just thinking like, okay, like since it's already going kind of well, you know, those two dollars, two leads for 50 bucks, if I just increase the ad spend, it will be even better. If I were you, what I would do is I would duplicate that ad set and then you know, I would play around with that new ad set. I would make that 10 bucks or 20 bucks or 30 bucks. I would, I would, that's what I would do. Okay. Okay. Now, now that makes more sense. Yeah. Well, thanks. I know I like asked that like four times. It's all good. It's a very important question. Um, what else you got for us for? Hey, that's it. That that's it. Honestly, that was like already a lot of answered so much too. uh, yeah, the rest I'll just I'll just message you privately about then you have the other call and then from there we can talk about whatever rest. Yeah. yeah, I know I went over a lot. If you could just message me to remind me and then we'll tackle those one by one. Cool. All right, bro. I'll circle back if you're if you're here if you have more questions. Awesome. Thank you. Dan. How's hey, it going? How's it going? Chilling, chilling. Did you get a chance to to read through some of my responses? I did. Thank you. Welcome. Thoughts? Um, 
yeah, I mean, it all makes sense. I, I do have some like <clears throat> some other questions as I was, <clears throat> excuse me, sitting here thinking about stuff I wasn't sure of. Um, I guess the first one is like, how long do I keep these ads going? Is it just until I book a client or is it um, just until I book? And I'm not sure how, how they're performing because I think one is doing way better than the other, like as far as the uh, the ads in the ad set. If you want to share your ad, so your, so is your question like how long you should you be running ads, or is your question like like which ads which ad set should I keep on? Is that what you're asking? Both, I guess. So I keep it on, both of them on, and if if it, if it depends or not, um, like I see one ad set is uh. It's like seventeen dollars a lead, huh? Um, but like that's not the the true number because like uh, you know I have like I have thirty three leads overall, so I think altogether it's like eight dollars and thirty cents a lead. So I don't know is that good? Yeah. So so based off of Facebook Ads Manager, what is your cost per? How many ad sets do you have? Actually, why don't we do this? Why don't you share your screen? All right. Uh, you, should share. Yep, you should be able to share a screen. Let me bring this in. Okay. So. Have you customized your columns or you have not? No, I haven't done anything. Okay. I, so I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> So make a note, make a note to yourself to customize your columns. It's in week three at the very, very bottom. Customize column. Okay. So what that's going to do, is going to give you specific numbers. We're going to be looking at specific metrics. So right now uh, I want to look at your, go to the results section, uh, results 28. Okay. So, so here's technically what you should be doing technically uh, would be, if you have one asset that's giving you seven dollars per lead, and then one asset that's giving you seventeen, that that second one is drastically different, right? And so your gut is going to be like, okay, well, I should obviously close, uh, you know, shut down the one that's more expensive. But then what we also need to do is we need to look at your CPM and your unique click through rate. So let's see if you have a CPM here anywhere. I don't think so. I haven't done anything with it, so I don't. I don't know. If it's all right. Um, so if you click on columns right above a little bit, yep. And then we click on, um, it might be under performance and clicks. Let's try performance and clicks. Try that one. Let's see if you're, yeah. Okay, so scroll a little bit to the right for CPM. Okay. So, so click through rate. Okay. So here's some, an important lesson. You might want to write this down. Typically your the higher your CPM. A lot of people say, you know, CPM is a bad thing, whatever. So CPM is simply stands for how much Facebook is charging you to give, uh, have a, a, a thousand impressions. So every time Facebook shows your ad a thousand times, it's charging you $27 and 55 cents above and then below $23 and 14 cents. And so if, uh, which one was more expensive? Was it the stories? Um, on the previous one, it was the bottom one. Yeah, so stories. Okay, so so this is telling me that your stories is actually cheaper. So if if your CPM for the feeds was twenty seven bucks, and if your uh, uh, if your feeds CPM was twenty seven bucks, and then your story CPM was like seventy bucks, then I'd be like, oh, that makes sense. It's because it's way more expensive to get it from the same people. And so typically, when you have a higher CPM, it means that quality is typically better. So in this particular case, your the quality of your traffic from stories and feeds is pretty much the exact same. It's 27, 23 bucks, about the same. I would be looking at there's like if it's like double or 50% more. It's not. And then right. if you look at your CTR, that's your click-through rate, it's like both of them are about 1%. So 1% of people that are seeing your ad are clicking on it. Okay. So what this means is that simply you you don't have like feeds and stories are not two different pockets of people that are like one is like significantly better than the other, is what I'm trying to get across to you. So that means that if one is costing you 17 bucks and one is costing you six bucks, you should 100% shut off the 17 bucks one. It's literally, you're just spending more money for no reason. Okay. So just click that off. Yep. You can go just like turn it off. Yep. Now here's the curveball I'm going to throw you away. 
the curve I'm going to throw you away is that back in 2020, there was an iOS update. And so you don't, the reason you said earlier, like, hey, like Kushik, my, this is the number of leads I actually have. The number on Facebook ads manager is not correct. You're right. Facebook ads manager does not report the correct number of leads. So when you, for you, like, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but like you are asked whether you want to opt out of like having your data tracked. A lot of people have opted out for that. So your number of leads might be like 10 at the bottom. At the top, it might be like 30. And so a lot of people are just like, they're, you're just not getting their data. Facebook is not giving the right data. So you might want to write this down. What you need, not right now, but what you're going to need down the road is you're going to need a third party tracking system. So for me, I don't read, I don't look at Facebook ads manager to like make decisions. The only thing I'm looking at is I'm looking at the CPM. I'm looking at the ad spend. That's it. I don't really care about anything else that's on this page. I'm using, for me, what I use is Hyros. If you want to write that down, Hyros. You can use Hyros. You can use something like Triple Whale, which is what Mason messes around with. There's other uh, attribution softwares, but you're going to need something like that to actually like know what's actually going on in terms of your data. Um, so does this all make sense in terms of like that? So like now the question becomes, okay, now that you shut that off, well, then what do you do? You can either go into feeds and spend more money, or you can just like duplicate the feeds ad set because, okay. you, because you just stop spending, you know, half your budget. If you want to continue to have the same results, you should theoretically, you should be able to double your, you should be able to duplicate your feeds. And then now you should have even more leads at the same time rate. Okay. Okay, so that's what I would do if I were you. Now, the question that the second question you asked is like, okay, well, Kushik, how long am I keeping ads on? Um, if you uh, if you want to pull up your onboarding page, And if you scroll down and if you keep scrolling down to like the milestone section right there. So if you keep going down a little bit, you see how it says by week one, by week two. So what week are we on right now for you? This would be, uh, this is the start of week four. Yeah. Okay. So last week you should have conducted one to three sales calls, which you did. You ha you had how many sales calls last week? Um, I had two, but the, it says book three, book one and two, or one of three. Yep. So the same as having them. So no, it was booking one to three sales calls last week. So you're actually, and then this week, your goal. Uh, so last week was week three. This is week four for you, you said, right? I've, I've booked five sales calls. I've had two. Okay. So you're all right on pace then. Your goal is to have at least three sales calls by this week. And so right. typically what I'm telling people is by week six, they got to have, they, they should be closing a deal. That's like staying on track. So hopefully that answers the question in terms of like how long to keep the ads on. Again, the sooner you close a deal, the sooner we can turn them off. So if you can close a deal this week, well then you're two weeks ahead of schedule. And so I'm, I'm hoping to close one tomorrow. I give people, so. Yeah. Dude, like, please, if you close tomorrow, man, like we're, we're on to the next phase for sure. We're rock and rolling. Um, I, I tip, I, so when I created this chart, I did it to be very conservative and slow. And so you can see that instead of like 12 weeks, what I've done is if you scroll down and if I were you, I would take some time to really read through this and to like, see like week by week, what the journey looks like. But I, I put it out for 20 weeks and by, by week 20, you, you basically selected a niche, you built a funnel to get book calls, you've helped them close leads, you help them make money, right? Like week 20 is like the entire journey is done. The entire journey is done where if I got hit, you know, God forbid, if I got hit by a truck, you'd be okay. That's the goal. If you were to run through all everything from week 20 and hit every mark. So if you scroll up though, so it's like, if the question becomes like, now that you know, now that you know that that's what it looks like, do you want to go faster? Do you want to stay on pace? That's the question you want to ask yourself. And so if you close a deal this week, well then boom, now you're two weeks ahead and you can, you can excel. Cause if I'm you, if I'm you, like, why not try to get week 20 stuff done by week 12? You know what I mean? There's always yeah. the next, there's always the next thing to do. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns, thoughts. Um, yeah, I got a few more questions. Um, 
I had them on my Slack channel, my private Slack here. Um, uh, three, number three. Okay, so from um, <clears throat> my my first sales call was, I mean, it was a shit show. <laughs> and uh, my uh, my second one, it was it was less of a shit show, and it was. Um, <clears throat> But honestly, I, I like shot from the hip because like at the end, you're like, yeah, don't even bother or something to that effect. You're like, don't, don't even try. So I was like, all right. So I honestly was just like, <clears throat> I just shot from the hip with this guy. I was like, listen, man, like I was, this is supposed to take like an hour long to present this to you. But you seem like a, like, he's like a, this is the guy that asked me, like he wanted to know an amount beforehand. And he's just like, I didn't want to waste. He said he didn't want to waste either of our time. So I just kind of like, like blew through it with him. And then, um, like give, give him the the price. And then he was actually pretty receptive to that. He's like, I appreciate you doing all that. But um, anyway, his concern was the, uh, the Facebook um, legit scripts, I guess he sells mushroom coffee. And I guess that like Facebook thinks of that as like mushrooms, like uh, psychedelics. So he got hit with that. So I was, I was just like, yeah, man, if, I, I don't know if I could help you kind of a mm -hmm. thing. So, but, so is it, is it like is it psilocybin or is it like regular mushrooms? No, it's just regular mushrooms, like like lion's mane, and like there's there's no hide to it. But they they um uh like ding them for for that. Well, then you can help them. Well, he 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 was saying that like he he's actually um like he he has a strike or something. I don't know. People, Facebook will like ding people and shut their ads account like all the time. Like I get my ads rejected all the time. Doesn't mean anything. Okay. Well, yeah, my, my concern was um, you know, my ads account getting blocked. So I was like, uh, I didn't want to touch it. But um, I did tell him like I'm like, you know what? I, I'll just honestly with him. I said, I never heard of uh, legit scripts, and but I'll do some research and I'll get back to you, find out like what I what I know. And my plan was just to ask you guys about it. Um other than, than Googling about about it. But um but like it's, it's kind of confusing because because on one hand you're like sell 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 but then you're like oh yeah if, if the money's not there then don't bother so so my my question is like for the the unqualified um because you like one on your uh your scripts you say like hey like crunch numbers and i'm like okay over here just like do 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 faking faking these like crunching numbers right but it's basically the the thousand dollars we're trying to hit right so like a thousand dollars average um order value and then the lifetime value or and or lifetime value and then if it's a thousand dollars we can help and if it's if it's less then is that do i just kind of say hey you know, um you know like there's a i i can't help you with with uh this this uh free ad but like i can sell you services basically yeah so you said that there is confusion um what do you so it sounds like you're there's confusion there the reason there's confusion there is like hey kashika saying x in one video and then he's saying y in a different video and then over voice notes he's saying something else like i'm a little bit confused what this kushi guy <laughs> expects of me um and so my question to you is now that we're here face to face what do you think i expect what do you think you should be doing what do you think i would expect of you <clears throat> well i think number one you probably just want to rep in Right. So like just just get on a call. And even if it's if it's not going anywhere, like or like um uh like the mushroom guy, you're like just just get on it because it, it, it is a rep. Um but then like with with that with that that website girl, you're like, yeah, like like there's always something you can sell. Like you like I'm a magnet for money, you said, right? So like so I'm gonna sell something. So so I guess that's that's my question is like if 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 they're not qualified for like the uh the advertising services, which is, you know, like, like, let's say, um, like, like the mushroom coffee guy, it was like, he, he was selling bags of bags of coffee for like 20 bucks. And like, um, so you're like, yeah, there's, there's nothing there. So in that case, like, I felt like he was telling him like, Hey, like, I, um, basically just shooting from the hip and saying like, Hey, we're, we're looking for this number, you know, uh, the LTV, um average order value of a thousand and you're not there so unfortunately like you don't qualify for the free ad however like if you want i can i can still shoot an ad for you and it's just you know whatever this much like is, is that like a, a good way to kind of like go about it or no so 
my one piece of advice, so I'm going to say two things. One advice would be that if you are ever concerned, just ask, right? Just like you're doing right now. Like, like Kushik, I had this one person, like, so Kushik, I had this call, Kushik, I had this discovery call. Here's how I went. Like, should I try to sell them or what should I do? That would be my first piece of advice to you. And if you just do that every single time, you can't screw this up because I'll just tell you. Okay. So that's, a sure, that's a surefire way of like just knowing for sure. Okay. The second thing is it's important to understand. So there's there's the course and there's this program that you and I and Mason and Ethan and we're all in right now. There's two different worlds. When it comes to the course, these are people that they study the course, they try to figure out themselves. I'm not with them. They're doing on them. They're doing it their way. And so what I've done is I've designed the course in a way that's cookie cutter that people can use as a starting point. And so for them, yeah, I show them like, hey, dude, like, here's what it means to be qualified. Here's what it means to be unqualified. If somebody's not qualified, you shouldn't do X, Y, Z. I tell them because they're not with me. They don't have three months with me. Got it. So I'm helping them the best I can. And that journey is like a 12 month journey. It's a much longer journey. And so I'm telling them that advice. I'm giving them advice as if I'm not here. I can't actually like coach them. I can't mentor them. And so, yeah, like I will tell people like, hey, dude, this is unqualified. Like the, here's what you should actually do because that's what served them. That was what would serve them at the highest level. You on the other hand, and those people, by the way, they don't get the niche funnel. They don't niche down. They don't do any of that stuff. I don't teach them any of that stuff. I only teach that to you guys. And so for those guys, they don't have a 12 week thing for you guys. You guys have 12 weeks. And so you guys have this 20 week thing that, that we're looking at the screen. That's for you guys. So there's a time constraint. These guys, there's no time constraint. But with you, there's a time constraint. And so there are certain skills I'm trying to help you guys accomplish. And there's certain skills I'm trying to help you guys master at a certain time frame. And so the advice that I give you guys is different than the advice that's inside the course. So if you're ever wondering, Kushik, the course says this. Is this what the course, is this what I should be doing or should I be doing something different? If you ask me, there's a surefire way that you're not going to get confused because I'll just tell you what to do. So if I say something that takes precedence over what's inside of the course, always, any given time. So if you and I speak and you ask a question, if I tell you something, it's like that trumps anything inside the course for sure. Every time. So, so, so the, so basically what I'm saying, and hopefully you're kind of coming to the conclusion is like you sell, every, you sell everyone. So the right thing to have done with that mushroom guy is if you just didn't know whether like you could like even get him results, here's what you should do, Dan. The reality is what you should do is you should still sell him. You should still sell him. You should still like put a smile on your face like, oh yeah, you got a mark. Don't worry about that. Um, you know, with our, we, we run the ads from our ad account. We'll get you taken care of. Our ad account is pristine. That's what you would do if you try to sell him. Wouldn't you? Yeah. You sell him a dream and then you get him to pull out his wallet and then pay you. That's all you should be focused on because that's all I care about. I just want to see, can you be, can you put on, can you turn that, uh, you know, when it's time to turn the lights on and turn the show on, can you turn that show on? Can you present? Can you be that ringmaster? Can you put on the song and dance? Can you do that to get the yes? That's all I care about. I don't really care whether it's possible to get them results or not. As crazy as it sounds, as messed up as it sounds, that's not what's important. If you, if another thing I'll say is, let's say, Dan, you can help somebody get results. Okay. But if you can't sell them, then does it matter? No. The most important thing is being able to sell. So that's all I care about. That's all. And that, that's the only thing that matters. And so when it came to that girl, what we were saying, what I was explaining to you, and maybe I should clarify what I was explaining to you is that if you try to go in with the angle of trying to sell ads, it may or may not work. You want to sell ads. Even with her, you want to sell the ads. You always want to sell the ads. But in the case that ads didn't work, this was your backup option or that was another angle of like the website. So that was my advice to you is like go in and either try to one, try to try to sell ads. And if ads doesn't work, your backup option is going to be the website. Or you just say, hey, look, I can sell ads. I can sell the website. I'm going to go and try to sell the website. That's going to be my angle. My, my, my thing was just like, again, can Dan do a song and dance and extract cash from it. That's the most important. That's all I'm trying to figure out. That's all I'm trying okay. to do. So Got it. when it comes to that video that says somebody's not on, so that thing of like $1,000 LTV. Okay. So I'll address that now. $1,000 LTV 
is what is typically required to make ads work. And that's what I'm going to tell the guys that are inside the course. For people like you, at the stage that you're in right now, it's not relevant. It is not relevant at all. Okay. I don't care if it's a $10 lifetime value. It doesn't matter. Not right now. For you, down the road, it'll matter. When you are at Jorge's level, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking to Jorge about. I'm talking to like, that's more advanced stuff. It's like, yo, you're spending $200. You're getting somebody to come in and spend $200 a month. Your client is basically losing money. What we need to do is we need to figure out how to charge 2K up front. Like that's more advanced. That's down the road. We're not there yet with you and I. That's the kind of stuff. We'll talk about those kinds of things down the road. Right okay. now, I'm going to focus on getting you to close. All right. That makes sense. I think the, the, the disconnect was like, I would just watch the video and then do whatever it was saying. And then like, I would ask you about for clarification and, and then it would be like, oh, don't forget about that. And I was like, oh, I thought and it would happen like a couple, a few times. And that's, <laughs> so I, I understand now you put it that way. Yeah. I, and I, so like, and also like, I'll be honest with you. Like I've been, I've known that it might confuse you. And so sometimes I, I wonder if I'm sharing too much information with you, Dan, sometimes I, I feel like as I'm answering you, I'm answering you the correct and the political way where I'm saying, Hey, Dan, uh, you got this person. You're most likely not going to sell them because of reason ABC, but like going anyways. And I think that what you're hearing is you're saying you're, I think what you're doing is you're, it's almost like you're, you're hearing Koshika is giving me permission not to try to sell. And I'm never doing that. I'm just telling you, like, realistically, dude, this probably this isn't a good lead. You're probably not going to sell. I'm just keeping it real with you. And maybe I should stop doing that. Maybe I should stop doing it because maybe that's giving you permission to be like, oh, I'm just going to shoot for the hip and I'll try. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. No, no. every single person, bro, is you got a gun to your head and you got to make it work. Every single person, every single opportunity. I don't care how much money they have. I don't care what it is. You got a gun to your head and you got to try to do everything to close every single time. Okay. Um, so then tomorrow I have, a, a sales call with the Pilates girl and I'm optimistic, nervous, all of that. Um, so I'm going to try to get the script, script down, right. And then <clears throat> the example you have, I think it's for a med spa, um, in, in the script and, um, you, you collect a deposit. So I just wanted to like, is, is that, 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 that collected deposit, is that like for every every client i mean it can't be for every client right because it's not gonna like for the mushroom guy it wouldn't have worked i don't when think you, when you say collect a deposit you're what do you mean by that you're when, when you talk about um the the fast fast cash injection you say like you bring up an example like oh we're gonna play with house money because we're gonna collect a deposit from uh I, I may be getting it wrong but it was um it was something to the effect of like um <clears throat> You, you're you're gonna maybe, maybe it was selling uh people you that, that's already in your in her in their um you know contacts or or the or or the ads were like um <clears throat> you were walking through the ads and you're like yeah this is when we we like we like it's an ad, you know it's an ad and then they opt in it's a it's the application and then there's a, a deposit that we collect and I just don't know how that works for like Pilates gym. It's not important that, you know, and I'll say that to be sure all that, okay. matters. all that, like you're, you're getting two things mixed up. What you're doing is you're separating selling somebody versus like actually getting them results. So you're asking that question of like, Kushi, what would it look like to collect deposit? How would I actually set that stuff up? You don't need to worry about that right now, Dan. Well, I guess I'm just asking because I, I, I don't want to be stumped in the call and be like, you know, like, well, I don't, I don't know how that works. So like, you know, okay. like I want to, I want to sit, I want to sound like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, and so that's the most important thing. So, so if you, if you lead from a thing of like, Kushik, this is what I'm thinking about. For, so there's two different ways you, you can be asked this question. One way of asking that question is like, Kushik, I just want to like learn about this stuff and like learn how to, like how it works. And what I would tell you is like, the only reason you should be learning about it is like, if you want to present it and sound affluent and sound like, you know what the heck you're talking about. If you're doing it for that reason, like, yeah. Um, and so like, again, the most important thing is just like making something sound sexy as hell to the point where they want to buy it. That's all that matters. And so if your strategy, so the question doesn't, so if I'm you and if Koshik isn't available, if I'm not here, well, then you would most likely pick a strategy where you're not collecting a deposit and you'd probably present that because you don't fully understand how it works. Does that make sense? Yeah. You got to be thinking like, how, how do I say so? How do I present something where like I sound, I make it sound sexy. That's the number one thing. Okay. 
It's not necessarily like, how does it work or doesn't it work? Now, if me explaining to you how it does work, if that's what would help you, well, then I can happily go over that with you. But I think it's a little bit advanced. I don't think you're quite ready to fully understand. Like that's the stuff that me and Jorge were talking about. Okay. Yeah. I, I was trying to listen to that, but like to connect that because it, it sounded similar to, you know, to gym and all that. Yeah. It's um, so it's like if you, the reason you collect a deposit is to get people to show up and it depends on the offer. If you're offering some kind of a discounted thing, like, Hey, $200 off of this, or for example, Pilates, Hey, $200 off of Pilates. Then you hop on, you know, somebody opts in, then you call them and say, Hey, it's gonna be 50 bucks to show up. And then, you know, after that you have your session with the Pilates, or if you did something like Jorge, which is like, Hey, look, it's going to be your first Pilates class is hundred percent free. And then when you hop in ex experience that, and then when they hop in there, th in that case, you wouldn't collect a deposit because it's a free thing. And if you collect right. a deposit, I'll turn people off. Right. And, and then the fast cash injection is a different thing. The fast cash injection is just reactivating their uh, customer list. It's like, sell. it's just selling to their customer list again. And, and she mentioned she like in the, uh, in the discovery call, she actually did that because she was um, uh, like, you know, rent was due and it was, she was low. And then she just like resold, like, like sold, like it was a flash sale on a Friday. She was able to get like $7,000 that day. Exactly. There you go. Boom. There you go. And that's a very valuable lesson for you. Like, and so what you do is you lean into that. And you, if I were you, that would be part of the sales process. Like, hey, look, Mr. Business Owner, you did this out of necessity. We don't do this out of necessity. This is actually part of our process. Once a month, we actually blast out an offer. So for January, we have a, a New Year's offer. For February, we have a Valentine's offer. For March, we have a marshmallow, uh, you know, whatever offer. April, we have an April Fool's offer. May, we have a May showers offer. June, we have a summer offer, right? And so yeah. what you do is you let her know, like, hey, every single month, you know, that 7,000 that you got, well, we're going to get you, uh, you know, a two hundred fifty to thousand dollar fast cash injection every so month, and we're gonna blast out emails and nurture people all the time. So that's gonna be part of your your sales process potentially. Okay. So that's something I would lean into. That that's that's super crucial, uh, like that's super important that you brought that up and you can lean into that. Okay. She, the, the reason you'd lean into that why is because she's already bought into that. She's already seen the seven thousand. So if you just lean into it, say, hey, look, you did this by accident. We actually do this on purpose. That's going to be a huge selling point for you. Okay. Um, and then just like some other questions. <clears throat> so just <clears throat> when, when you call and text, like you're, you're, you're calling and texting on your go high level number, right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think like I may have like called on my cell and like, and, and use both numbers, like my, my personal number and my go high level, go high level number. Um, but on my ad, it says like, follow me on, on, on Instagram or text me. It's my personal cell number. So I wonder if I should take that off and use my go help, go high level number. Mm. I, I don't think it's going to make a, uh, I mean, I, I haven't gotten any calls or anything on like out of the blue from it. So I don't think it matters. Yeah. What I would do if I were you is for your form, if you, if you're worried about it on your thank you page, just change that number to your go high level number. Okay. And then moving forward, just try to make a habit of speaking to everybody through your go high level number. Got it. And then, um, so lastly, just one last question. Um, oh, two, two questions, sorry. Uh, is there a way to, um, on go high level, the prompt to, like on the launch pad to integrate was Stripe? And Stripe takes a bigger cut than like, let's say uh, Elevon. So like, is there a way to, to integrate Elevon? Uh, that's a Mason question for sure. Can't hear you, Mason. I have no clue on that one. Okay. I use Stripe myself, so I don't, I know you can integrate Stripe with Go High Level, but I'm not sure. What was the, what's the process? Um, Elevon E, let me see. Um, E-L-A-V-O-N, Elevon. And I think like if you go to Costco, like it, I, I have a membership, obviously. So um, it's like 1.1% versus the 2.9%, which I mean is a, can add up. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't, I mean, if message I already- me, Message me, sorry to cut you off. Okay. Um, can you message me in Slack about it, Daniel? I can look, yeah. I can see, look into it. Okay.
yeah it's yeah it's it's not it, like for sure it adds up i i tell most people like don't stress about it don't worry about it for the time being and then down the road you should like get it with your bank Yeah. Okay. That was my thought. Like Stripe was easy to set up. So whatever. And like, if, if I close tomorrow, it's going to be Stripe. So I don't want any, like, you know, I don't want to like lose a sale for, you know, one point something percent. But, um, so one last question is trying to get my visuals right for the, for the, for the call tomorrow. And I'm trying to use the, um, the, what you, what I've seen you use, which is like the sketch sketch pad sketch IO. I can't make the form. I don't know how to make the form long. It's just like one document and I can't, I can't <laughs> extend it. So I'm just wondering if like, is there something I'm doing wrong? I'm trying to Google in it. Yeah, um, I can show you. Um, do you use Canva at all? Um, I have. I, I'll show you what I do, but I would actually recommend Canva. Okay. Yeah. So, because the reason for that is like, whenever you sketch IO, if I clear my cash and cookies, like all my shit's gone. With Canva, you always have your stuff. Oh, well, I actually um, pay the $5 or whatever for the year. And so it's like on my, uh, it's, I have like the, I have it downloaded. Oh, you, so you paid $5 for the um, sketch.io? Yeah, for the, for, for the year. Oh, okay. Well then, yeah, if you want, uh, I can share my screen. I'll just show you how I do it. Okay. Let me stop here. So, so my, my, my other calls, I actually like made screenshots. It was like, like using them like, like photos and it was, it wasn't nice. So all I do is I'll, I'll click the plus here. I click this. Mm -hmm. Instead of height, I'll just say 10. And then boom. That's stupid. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was so dumb. All right. That's I it. was like trying to make them like really, really small. And then like maybe they, that's what it was. Like you make the, the you paste it in there and like adjust the size so it's really small so that way you can zoom it. I don't know. It was stupid. Okay. Silly. I I I I honestly I try to use Canva, but I'm just so used to using this. Um that I do. I but I think honestly Canva's better. Um okay. But yeah, whatever. Um I was just copying the master. So he like I saw a sketch.io, so I was like, all right, well, that's good enough for me then. Hey, it's simple. It works. Um, really quick, Dan. Um, just remember, what are the what are the four kinds of clothes that you can close tomorrow? What are the four kinds of what? There's four kinds of closes. What are the four that you can do tomorrow? Oh shit! You put me on the spot here. Four kinds of closes. Well, one is like paid in full, right, for the three months. Um, then there's uh the regular like monthly fee. So just like month to month. And then there's like the free to fee. And, and the fourth that. one, um, fourth is month to month. I don't, I don't know. What's what's the fourth one? So, yeah. So the first two you got right, right? Pay in full and then just get them on a month to month, right? Both of those. Those are like, you know, if you feel confident, you feel like they're going to go for it, go for that. The third option is what you said, the free to fee. And the way that works is basically you offer a free trial, like a seven day free trial or something like that. Now, when you offer the free trial, remember, you got to get them to still pay. They cover the ad spend. So they got to cover that and they got to pay you. You got to get them to pay, send that over to your bank account. The third option is the same. They send over the money to your bank account, but instead of you trying to convert them after seven days, you just do, hey, at the end of the 30 days, whatever is generated, you keep a certain percentage, I keep a certain percentage. Yeah. So pay in full, monthly, convert after a seven day trial or split up the profits. And then when you split the profits, is that, a, is that above their profit? So like, in other words, in the discovery call, if they like hers, is like she makes 30, 30, 30 grand a month. Is that we split after 30 grand or is that just from the, from the beginning? So you split the profits that you generate. Okay. So after 30 grand, we split it. Okay. And again, everything can be, you know, tracked in the software and, and all that stuff. So. Okay. And in terms of the profits, I would say just say 20% of the profits. That'd be a good starting point. Okay. Cool. Um that's that's all I have. How are you feeling about stuff? I you know, I know we're 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 going into week four now. How are you feeling overall? Um, it's overwhelming, man. All these like opt-ins, I'm just like shit, when it, like, honestly, when's it gonna end? Um, 
but I mean, ultimately it's, it's nice knowing like, okay, like I can sell any one of these, you know, and then that's money in the bank. But, um, as far as like the, uh, the sales call, dude, like I'm, I'm still pretty nervous to be honest. Cause it's, it's so much to go through and, um, yeah, it's, it's not like the, it's not like a discovery call at all. When you say, when you say it's overwhelming, you said, you said three things, you said overwhelming. And then you said, it's cool that X. And then you said, um, it's nervous, like three things. So when you said that you feel overwhelmed or it feels overwhelming, what part spe specifically feels overwhelming for you? Like what part of all this is like, so, like so just thinking in the future, like already thinking like, man, I, I could see how I would have to hire somebody to help me through this because I don't know how I'm supposed to reach out to these opti uh, these, these opportunities, um, you know, shoot a video, edit, also manage an ad. And then also I have a, like, I have, I have a wife and baby and like one on the way. It's like shit like this. This is like taking up, <laughs> it's taking up some time. So, um, oh, and then I also thought about that. Like if, when I do hire somebody to, let's say like go into the opt-ins or whatever, how, how do you charge that? Or how do you, um, how do you pay for that rather? Yeah. Like, so that, what I'll tell you is Dan, you're not even close to that right now. Like that's <laughs> like, so if you look at, so your cost per lead right now is like eight bucks. Yeah. So right now you're like, dude, I feel overwhelmed because I'm doing all these things. If you caught on to what Jorge said, what was his cost per lead? Do you remember? I don't remember. I might've walked away. Yes. Um, was it higher or lower? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, $10 a lead? $10 a lead? So Mason, don't, give me, don't, don't I, I'm, I want him to understand. I want him. To, what, I want, was it 50? I want this to hit him like a brick of trucks. If that's what it is, hit you like a brick of trucks or whatever. I want you to emotionally just understand this. Okay. Yeah. It was 50. And then he was saying that one out of four people were responding. So can you, and, and, and he's on a good end. Uh, I'm on about $30 per booking. Most people it's about a hundred dollars. So right now you're like freaking out because you got like 10 people a day. Imagine you got like one person a day or every other day. Now, all of a sudden, is it overwhelming? No. Not even close. Now, now you're like, fuck, I wish I had more. Well, it's, yeah, it's overwhelming with the opposite direction. Yeah. So that's why I said it's like, this is like when you niche down and you do that, that problem goes away completely. Okay. And then all that stuff in terms of like filming and editing, all that stuff, you only do that for like the first client. Everybody else, you don't film, edit, or any of that stuff. You just do it once. Okay. So you're thinking into the future a little bit too much right now. So if that's what's overwhelming you, the good news is when you niche down and you launch your funnel, and it's going to get super slow. So like all the stuff that you're feeling right now, like you, we're like, we're getting you acclimated to like all this pressure, but afterwards it's going to be like super quiet. It's going to be like this. It's going to be like, like the quiet at, at the end of a party when everybody is left. It's how, That's how it's going to feel. Okay. So aside from yeah, that, but, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say like, that's, that's my, um, my, uh, what do they call it? My toxic trait is like, I'll, I'll like analyze super in the future. Yeah. And you know, it's me. like, it's a, a paralysis by analysis. That's, that's me, man. A hundred percent. And I, I, I do it every time. It's hard not to. It's hard not to. And, and so I'm, that's, that's why I asked you guys and I check in with you guys just to make sure because sometimes your imagination can run wild. Like right now it's running wild. And so yeah. hopefully we we'll bring you back and reel you back in and, and you're able to breathe and have like that, that overwhelm hopefully is gone as I'm kind of like sharing the reality with you of like, no, it gets really quiet actually after this, it, this, this part is very loud. As soon as you close, dude, it gets like super quiet. Okay. Does that help right. a little bit with the overwhelm? Yeah, it's just it's it's just nice knowing that I have like thirty entities, real literally, and you know, so just like go, going through them and being like, okay, I just need to like, I, I can fuck up like all these times, and like I remember like what you said, right? Like, can can I close one out of four hundred? So it's like, okay, well, I got I'm over two, or right? I still got like three hundred ninety eight more to go. So yeah, when you view it like a numbers game, um, it it changes quite a bit. 
and it becomes less. And, and so like, that's kind of, so the first thing you said was overwhelmed. The second thing was like, but it's nice that I can close somebody. And I think what you meant to say was like, it's nice to have a system where leads are just pour, pouring in. And like, I just, I know I can, I know I'm not going to be oh for like a bajillion. I know I'm going to hit one right. of these. It's yeah. just a matter of time for it to click. And so you're right. And so keep yourself grounded with that thought and just understand it's just a matter of time. It's going to click for you. You're going to be all right. It's just a matter of time. You're just figuring this stuff out. You're figuring out how to swing. You're figuring out how to swing, the way the wind works, the way people are swinging the ball, the different curve balls. You're just figuring this stuff out. And then you're going to Okay. Hit. Okay. But really, my question was really regarding sales. That's when you said overwhelm. It's like, yeah, it's okay to be overwhelmed when it comes to sales. Like where you're at, it's okay. What I my my suggestion for you is like, you know, it's been how many weeks has it been since you've been like doing When did you start discovery calls last week or the week before? I think the week, the week before. Yeah. So, yeah. so basically last week was like your second full week, just doing like calls and all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm my first discovery call, you know, was nervous and it's like, Oh, it's like, it got, it got easy quick as far as like, Oh, you, all you're doing is, you know, setting up another call. But now it's like that call is like super, super huge. And it's like, uh, Dude, I, my first one was just so bad. It was a like crash and burn. It was probably like, it was embarrassingly bad. My first sales call was terrible, dude. I had literally a notebook and I was like looking down. And as I was transitioning, I was like, um, oh shit. So I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> like it was literally that. It was so bad. Um, so yeah, but you, you probably did way better than you, you probably think for your very first one. Yeah, wow. the the yeah. So I'm I'm hoping tomorrow I'm like you know a lot more calm and like like remember like what to say, as far as like because like the first one I was like like lost in the script. <laughs> Tomorrow's one is a good one. Again, I I don't want to be confusing you, and I maybe should stop, and maybe I will stop after this. But like, you know what I've been telling you the past two weeks is like yeah, it's a good lead, it's a bad lead. Uh, but tomorrow's one really is a good lead. Tomorrow's one okay. really like. Do your absolute darn bestest, man. Try to close that one. Yeah. Even if you do a free to fee, even if you do a percentage, I don't care. Like, do one of like, and this is the this is one last thing I want to bring up is like, again, visually on the screen, you have two paths you can go down. Okay, one path that you go down is you present the paid in full and the monthly payment plan. And by the way, you present both of them. You don't present one of them. You present both of them. The way I do it, you present both. It's my conversation with you. Hey, Mr. Business Owner, it's going to be $1,000 a month for three months. Or if you cover three months in advance, it's going to give you a discount of 500 bucks. It's going to be 2,500, right? So that's how you're going to present it. You have one option to do this. And then if they don't go for it, then you can do the percentage deal or you can do the free to fee. Free to fee. Okay. Another option is this is if you you're feeling confident about everything. If you're not feeling confident, then right away you're going to go for the percentage deal or you're going to go for the free defeat. Okay? So you're going to be you're doing your sales call here and then you're going to be like, "Hey, which path do you want to go down?" If you're if you're if you're feeling cocky, if you feel like you did a good job, you're looking at her body language, she's bought in, go for this. And then this is your backup. And so really if, really quick, hey, can I cut you off cuz I think this is super duper important. When he says like in your like comfortability to sell he's not talking about in terms of getting them results he's simply talking about how like the vibe of the call is going and if you believe that you would actually close not if you're going to do a great job fulfilling so i think that's super important to mention and throw on there really quick okay yeah thank you so yeah two pots man and just like as you're doing your call be paying close attention to her body language her words everything and just pick one of those two paths man okay okay Let's get this W, man. Let's get this W tomorrow. Hopefully. We'll see. So we'll see how that call goes. We'll we'll see how this week goes. And then we'll reassess at the end of this week. Okay. okay. Cool. All right. Cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Mason. Thanks, uh, Koshik. Appreciate it. Cool. Well, we'll circle back, man, if you have more questions. All right. I'm going to actually hop off my... Uh, I'll, I'll probably come back on, but my... Uh, my wife, he works nights. She, she's away because so I gotta like help her. Okay, fair enough. Also, your I th was it your uncle? Uh, was your brother in law that was like super skeptical? Has, has my, he been my my cousin? Cousin, have you spoken to him recently about what's going on? Um, he just kind of knows I launched and I'm I'm getting I'm getting leads. That's all as far as 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 we've talked. But I I kind of want to I I want to close before I talk to him again. Yeah, put him on here. Get him <laughs> on here. Yeah, that I, I I get that. 
It'd be nice yeah. to say I told you so. It'd be cool. Yep. Cool. All right, man. Well, we'll speak with you, uh, speak again with you soon. All right, man. Thank you. Um, MJ. Hey. How's it going? Going okay. I mean, um, I was super stumped last week. I'll be really quick. I don't, I actually don't have a lot. <laughs> I don't have a lot, but yeah, you know, I was, uh, I was kind of stumped all through last week because I, you know, had my deadline to be able to like launch the ads at the end of uh, the weekend, like on Sunday, I think was what I set it for. And then on Friday, like, you know, I guess you already know, because I've been like back and forth trying to figure out um, the whole what's up with the with the uh, connection with the Instagram and whatnot. So I had, you know, gone through a few Reddit posts, um, just digging as much as I can. I tried to reach out to Facebook. That is the, the most difficult thing. I They don't allow you to reach out to them, I guess, <laughs> for the most part. Um, and then, you know, that I had like this generic email that they sent me. I don't think they ever responded, but I did find a few Reddit posts that I tried on Friday that said something around switching my Instagram account back to a personal, keep it on a personal for, you know, at least like 40, 48 hours to 72 hours, and then like try to, you know, flip it back again and, you know, try connecting it and see if that works. So I had that going from Friday up until today actually monday was when i tried to reconnect it back and you know same issue um so i just try all this stuff i have one more thing i'm gonna try i i had deleted my um my facebook page i thought maybe the page wasn't created properly or whatnot so i deleted the pages and uh tried to create those and those didn't it, it doesn't seem like the page is an issue um it does seem like the instagram account is the issue so my next uh, trial here before I probably hop on with Mason tomorrow would be to delete the Instagram account I currently have and recreate a new one um, and try again. Only qualm would be I would break your rule in terms of not having any periods on my handle name because I would lose that. <laughs> you know, so I, I initially got um, the name Stratum Marketing Co., that was easy to get, but I think because if you delete the account, I think Facebook always does like 30 days or whatever before they actually put it into closure and you can't, yeah, so you can't use that username again. So it'd probably be up in the air. So both my Facebook pages and Instagram account might just, you know, not have the same username because I have to find something else that could work under that. But yeah, I'll, tr I'll give that a try. And see if that, you know, if that works okay. And uh, hopefully, yeah, I'll go from there. But I, I think it's the, it's the Instagram account because it just kept on giving errors after errors after errors, just trying to do regular stuff, like connecting to my, you know, personal um, uh, Facebook account. It wouldn't do that. It wouldn't collect payments. It wouldn't do anything. So I just figured, okay, maybe there's something up here. So I would delete it and then I have to like re-upload everything I, uh, I uploaded to the previous one again. So... I guess that's kind of like really where I'm at right now. It that the 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 issue is that it's not connecting with your Facebook page. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. When so when you, I created, sorry, go did, ahead. Did you create this Instagram? Did you just recently create it? No, I created it the week when we when we uh you know hopped on uh, the. When I when the week when I paid into the the program, literally that week was when I created. So, it's probably going in like you know two weeks now, right? Probably going in about two weeks now. So, yeah, I mean I remember like you know trying to like put out content to it the first week, and like zilch zero zero traction zero like nothing at all. Um, I wondered why, but I wasn't sure. The Instagram that you and I spoke with would that connect with your business Facebook page or it would not? That one would, that one I think did. Yeah. So which is what I was thinking about. I'm like, okay. So my other thought was if this doesn't, doesn't work out, maybe I'll have to rebrand like my personal Instagram and like, you know, take everything down from there. We try to get the name on and that was my other solution. Um, But yeah, that was, that was like my last resort, I guess. How many posts do you have on there? You've had that page for, I know that you use that for, you yeah. know, your spiritual purposes and yeah yeah. yeah 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 i've um, had that since like forever i don't know a few years now how many posts do you have on there 
Um, right now, not a lot, really. Let me see. Uh, I deleted some already before. So it's around like 15 or something about that. Yeah, not a lot. I mean, I don't think you need to rebrand or anything. It's not that serious. It's not that important. You know, I the only concern would be like, again, you and the people that are following you and stuff like that. And so if I'm you, I mean, like, you know, again, it sounds like that's the last thing that you want to do, but all you would have to do is maybe create like three things that are like regarding marketing and advertising and like, like that three, three is would be, enough. and then you could run ads from it. And it, I don't think it would like raise too many red flags. And so for you, it's like, I would say backup option is like, that's a backup option. Another option would be from scratch, creating a brand new personal Facebook, a brand new everything with a new email address. That would be another option. I didn't hear you. Can you say that again? So just creating a brand new everything. So a brand new personal Facebook, because every yeah. single Facebook is a, a, associated with an ad account and a, and a business manager. So you would create, so basically you'd create, you know, I don't know if you have any other email address, you'd use another email to create a personal Facebook okay. uh, and then convert that create another Instagram, connect all that. And then now you, you, you run everything with that. Okay. That'd be another option. That might be what you want to do actually before looking into like using your other right. Instagram, which just sounds like, again, that's not what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'll look at that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I ho hopefully by tomorrow. Yeah. I think, I think I should be okay. And maybe I'll just like, yeah. Uh, chop it up with Mason about some other things, depending on what happens, I guess. Yeah. Okay. What did Mason say? I don't actually like now that like I'm not even sure that this this is there's much Mason can do about this actually. No, we're just gonna well, I guess uh look into the the back end, maybe see what I'm what I was possibly doing wrong, I guess was was probably just gonna be the meeting for the most part. Um and if he had any ideas and then like I could, you know, fix it that way if he saw anything that wasn't making sense. Mason, are you there or are you, can you hear this? And he might be a little bit busy right now. Um, no we can circle back and I'd just be curious if he thinks of anything. I, I honestly think that the solution I just suggested, like that's probably going to be the fastest thing just starting from scratch and getting that all launched very fast. Yeah. I mean, I'll get right to it. Like, literally after this call and just like figure it out and then you know go from there and then we'll see i'm sorry man this is frustrating it's i hate when yeah i mean yeah you kind of really stomp i mean it's not like anything it's not, uh, it's, crazy but kind of stomp me if everyone you have like a goal and you think like you're kind of like going good so far and you just kind of like have that like three days man it's like what is it? you know <laughs> yeah I, anyways I, I, this kind of stuff is especially frustrating because it's like it's it's not that you're doing something wrong. It's there's something right. else in the ether that you 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 have you can't really control. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um yeah, no worries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would say let's do that. Um so step one is see if what you can figure out with Mason. Step two is try if you if that doesn't work, if I'm you, I'm gonna put my foot to the gas pedal and I'm just gonna create a brand new everything. If that you have issues with that, the third option is what I can do is I can just run the ads for you. I can run that from my ad account, run them to your Instagram. Okay. And so okay. we'll just do that. So it's not an issue. I'll just, I'll take care of it for you. Okay. So I would just say like, just let's just try to stick to the timeline. And if something doesn't happen, just let me know. And then I can get it set up within, within 24 hours for you. I will. I will. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much. Uh, anything else, MJ? Anything else that no. you want to cover? Anything else that's brewing in your head? No, Talk none thing. so far. Taking it, taking it literally one step at a time. Literally, literally, literally. <laughs> try not to get ahead of myself. Try not to, you know, think too far. Just like, okay, this is all I need to do today. And I would just do that. And if I have any questions during the week, I'd probably just message it on Slack. And you guys have been answering it as I as I have them. So I've been I've been good on that end. So how are things going? Um, two things. One, I know you had a lot of stuff with, you know, um, your your prior commitments in terms of building systems and getting people to take over for you. How's that going? And then two, is there any progress or anything different when it comes to that medical spa? Yeah, so the systems part is still going like um, I'm still building that. So that's that's been going OK. 
I've tried to just like uh, mellow or reduce any new introductions to uh, new process flows or anything like that, at least for like the next like three months, literally through this program. I, I don't want to introduce anything new. I just want my team and everyone to just like keep doing the same things that they're doing. And I just kind of keep my same roles in terms of following up after people if, you know, something wasn't launched the way that it should have been or um, any questions that anyone had or or has about, you know, the week and what they should post. So I've just kept that super, you know, mellow. I still have some other things that, you know, are coming up in the pipeline for other things that I, I needed to get done by deadline. So that's that's probably still going to happen over the weekend for me. Um, with the medical spa, though, um, I, I actually just messaged her today. So there were some, okay, so there are two opportunities that were, that were brewing before we, you know, started talking initially was one was I think she had, you know, gotten a deal with um a beauty uh a beauty whatever to carry their products. So I had already had a meeting with the with the manager for Canada um to be able to, you know, make content around that. So she had, you know, messaged me sometime last week, you know, in regards like the proposal that I was supposed to put forward, which I hadn't done yet, um, because I, I wanted to make sure that I spoke with her to propose what I was thinking first before we presented to the to the manager initially. But that meeting between us hasn't happened yet. So I'm just kind of prolonging that as <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm prolonging it, but I'm not I'm not pushing for it <laughs> as I should have. So I did message her today to just kind of like find out, you know, how she's doing, but she's probably also super busy because she hasn't responded back to me. So whenever that happens, that happens. Um, then the other piece is I think this weekend, I, I, I already had like um a, a proposal I had sent out, like I think about a month prior uh, to a different business in regards to like creating content and, and stuff like that, that they want to follow up on the 11th um that's in i guess like what four days or so and i don't know what's going to come of that so that's probably also in the pipeline there before so you know depending on what happens i might have those on my plate too you know uh in addition but i'm not i'm not for thinking about it until it's in front of me i guess <laughs> then i'll probably go that way cuz this right now is sort of like my main focus for the most part so yeah. So, and so I, 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 it sounds like we're on the same page. Um, but I guess like in terms of like right now with life and what it looks like, how, how are you doing in terms of like your time and your energy? Like is, do you, cause I, the last time we spoke, you were like down to the wire every single day, um, no free time. How are you doing right now? Is it very similar where like it's pretty much everything's blocked out or, the reason I'm asking is because if everything is already blocked out, well, then if you take any additional opportunity on, well, then it's going to throw, you know, there are things for a spin. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I think part of it is going to always just be me just looking at like what's possible and what's not, you know, at least so far for the time being, the way that I've literally been combining this for the most part, work, work hasn't been absolutely, you know, crazy the past couple of weeks. So between my early hours in the morning um, is when I, I do this as well as while I'm at work and some of those extra downtimes, um, you know, I'll be doing this as well. So that's really how I've been combining for the most part. Um, if I have energy when I come back in the evenings and whatnot, I'll also do that. But those have been my, my, my time slots there. So my thinking is, at least for right now, is, you know, like when you kind of like said initially, um, it's crazy in the beginning and I just kind of want to get to the crazy part as quick as I can um, so that if I have to balance that around any other uh, workload that may come later on, um, then I could fit that. So that's kind of like my, my mindset right now. Like I need to, um, it's doing okay right now where I'm, I'm mostly prioritizing this. I mean, I do have, you know, one or two things here and there that uh, I'm able to just like, you know, send, send a quick text, you know, speak to a few people. And so I'm not actually doing any work in that sense of like, you know, going out shooting uh, uh, lots or editing lots, apart from the few that I just have weekly. 
and I've already balanced that into my schedule to begin with. I know I edit every Thursday. I know I shoot every every Saturday. And yeah, so I kind of have that already like balanced out in terms of what I do uh, month to month, week to week. So anything else at this point, again, I'll just have to figure it out in terms of how I balance it. But if I can get myself to a place where this is um, already where I need to be as quick as I can, then that would be easier uh, when that comes. But for right now, they are not here. So I'm trying not to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. It's something that does isn't broken, right? So yeah. um yeah, well I, I think we're on the same page, man. It's like uh so right now the part that you're in it requires a little bit of brain power to get everything set up. And then once it's set up, it's not really a lot of brain power to get anything set up, but it's a lot of like managing your time because you're having conversations with leads and you're trying to also study the sales material. So maybe you can get ahead of, of, maybe that's what you've been doing is like studying some of the sales material, seeing my sales scripts and all that, because you're trying to balance having conversations and then balance watching the course material. And um, you're, it's just a little bit crazy with the, the number of leads coming in. And so it becomes a little bit loud and chaotic. And then that's what I was talking to Dan about. And then once that's done, then it gets a little bit quieter, but what happens is what I did not tell Dan this about, I'll tell you this is like, now what happens is now you have to exude even more brain power. So even though it's quiet, you have to exude more brain power because now you have to think for yourself because all the skills you have learned, now you have to apply that to building your own funnel, to building your own everything. And yes, of course we're here to guide you, but it requires you to think more critically. Um, so it's a different kind of uh, yeah. strain. Um, yeah, I yeah, understand I, that very well. Okay. So- yeah, I guess, I mean, as long as you're, you know, it sounds like you're, you're balancing your time with work. As long as you're not doing like a crazy production, that was my concern is if you're doing a crazy production with a lot of moving parts and really stressing about it, that's going to cause a lot of turmoil, but it sounds like it's very, you know, you're, it's rather simple things that you're taking on. And I think that's fine. That's what yeah. MJ, what can I do for you? Anything else I can do for you in the meantime? I think I'm okay. Thank yeah. You. you hanging in there? Yeah. Hang in there. You're doing good. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you, if you need us, MJ, of course, just let us know. Um, and then please keep me posted. When's your meeting with, uh, when's your meeting with Mason? Uh, tomorrow at five. Sorry. I'm going to call CSD for you here. <laughs> um, that's fine. Just yeah. tomorrow, I guess, evening. After yeah. Tomorrow. Just update me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I will. Yeah, I, I'd say like Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, just a daily update so that we can get you up and running as soon as possible. And we'll just kind of play it by ear and see what happens. For sure. Yeah. All right. Thank Anything you. else, MJ? Yeah, so far, so good. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Um, Bye, guys. Next person we have is Mr. Riviera. How's it going, Dan? Yo, what is it, Koshik? Chilling, brother. How you doing? Doing well. Um, yeah, just a uh, pretty heavy shoot over the weekend, but uh, I outsourced a lot of the editing for one of the first times. Um, I mean, I have done smaller projects I outsource, but this was like heavy, like 10 video edits, each 30 minutes long. So it just feels good to have someone else take care of it for once. Um, so, but um, still a heavy shoot. It was with Kaiser Permanente, the health network. So um just a lot of uh, critical stuff they have to hit on their productions. But um, yeah, luckily it shot well and uh, everything looks good and no uh, headaches. So, um, but yeah, I got, I read through your answer and stuff. So um, yeah, just cause I was kind of thinking, I was like, okay, you know, I'm kind of in this limbo state, um, you know, in terms of, you know, getting it working, getting it pumping. It's always like trying to troubleshoot pretty much until kind of coasting. Right. So um. But uh, yeah, you know, and um, I was even thinking like I could also like you've seen the ad. So just changing one line out and just using, hey, we you, we utilize AI because I, I think I you said we utilize video and I could just literally be like we utilize TikTok and AI and then I could just have B-roll over where I would have like my face would have been. So I don't have to do a whole reshoot. So I was just thinking of ways to do it so I don't have to be like make it too painstaking, but also achieve the same result. Um, and just have more stuff to test um, just because I am running that same ad and I'm kind of just been testing kind of like, you know, like the Facebook form or that or 
which by the way, I launched yesterday. I thought I had launched the other day. I think it was Friday, but I think I accidentally didn't click. Um, I clicked turn on or publish on the ad level, but not the ad set level. And I didn't realize till Sunday. <laughs> so, but uh, it's all good now. It's on the ad set level. It's on the ad level. Um, so I have one going Facebook form. Um, then I have a just IG placements. And then I have the, um, the original one, which is just like Facebook and IG and it all goes to kind of the landing page. So um, that's where I'm kind of at now. I did change. Yeah. I kind of saying the, we'll add an extra 20 K in revenue in 90 days. So yeah, you can see that there. That's like the updated. Um, I don't know if you want me to say it different on any landing pages. Like if it's the IG placements, you want me to say that, that main title different on the land on the calendar page, but um, it's pretty much just says that for every single one. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. Uh, not too much data rolling in yet because I did launch it yesterday. So uh, it does have a click or two on the, if I could go look. Um, I updated my sheet too. If you want to check that out, I can also link it uh, in the Slack here. Within between me and us. Um, cool, I'll just message you the that, but. So um, see if I did it right, because I know you said make different forms based on like the different placements, right? So I just try to separate it and then I just only pull data from like that ad set. Um, so I have like a Facebook one and then I have the IG placements, but just know it's only recently uh, done. I'm doing like $10 on each ad set. So three ad sets, $10 each to make $30 a day. And then um, obviously the longest running one is just the one that just says niche funnel KPIs, but the other ones just launched. Oh, wow. This is expensive. Holy cow. So the lead form ad is $14 for a link click. What is your unique click-through rate for the lead form? Uh, let's see. For the Facebook, uh, yeah, the Facebook. Uh, unique click, unique click-through rate is 0.63%. Um, IG placements is 0 0.50 and then the original one we were running uh, was 2.77 okay. but uh, you know I've been getting leads I mean through that one that says you know the original one we have I that gets the most link clicks and unique click through I've been getting a lot of people who think I'm a dentist I don't know why but <laughs> um, on the Facebook form I, I literally put maybe I should put lower barrier to entry but I do put like hey are you um what kind of doctor are you? Like, are you a dentist, orthodontist, periodontist, you know, sp other specialty? And then on the second question, I think I ask, are you owner, a practice owner? And then yes or no. And then it goes into like the autofill information of their name, phone number, uh, such and so forth. So um, I do have kind of like a little barrier to entry when it comes to like, hey, let me know if you're a dentist. Um, so I don't know if you want me to have that or to, to keep that, but it's nothing too crazy. It just says, are you a dentist, which type? And then, um, are you a practice owner? I think from, from what I've seen, um, when it comes to like funnel hacking, these other people, they're, they're all, they're often asking, are you a dentist or not? So I think that's, yeah, I, they're so doing that's that fine. Part. Yeah. Cause okay, I, yeah. with the algorithm here, maybe it's something with dentists, but like, maybe a lot of people are like, finding consumers as opposed to like dentist owners for some reason with the, and that's why they have it on the lead form. I've seen, so I've been funnel hacking a lot too, Kushi, especially that um, Indian guy who kind of goes to the Southeast Asians. Um, he was actually, believe it or not, um, I hope you know who I'm referring to, but you did send him like one of the clips. Um, he was the one that helped get a lot of, I, what I did is I went to his website where I found, I, sent, I found a way to find his actual clients that he kind of puts on these testimonials, right? He, he sat down with some guy and and uh, I was able to find out what ad, like that guy's ads that he's running and then find, that's actually how I got my uh, current dentist some results because, so it gave me some credibility there. Like, oh, okay, this guy must know what he's doing because the ads he's running for his clients, I ran for my client and now she's doing bonkers, right? So um I just thought, okay, well, you know, so I emulate a little bit of his form, but I did notice his form is very similar to others. So, um, yeah, just try to emulate them um, with the forms. Um, but yeah, I'm not too sure if like, cause I do get some people like I've seen it even in his videos, like 
he wasn't running Facebook forms in the beginning. Uh, he was he was running something to his landing page. And a lot of the comments on the the when his posts were just saying, hey, I want Invisalign. Hey, I want um, a root canal. Hey, I want this. So he was definitely dealing with it. And I think that was his response was for sure to put that up. Um, obviously, I just put it up yesterday. So maybe I need some tweaking. Maybe I don't know. I just have like dentist and dentistry as like my target um like in the in what i'm targeting just dentists and dentistry so i don't know if there's something more there i could do i feel like it is kind of basic like in terms of keyword targeting um and kind of broad so i don't know if there's something i could do there to make it more specific um but you know i i've done stuff for my dentist and uh rarely does changing the keywords really help it's always something with the ad um so i get that but there are been times very few times where we do change something in the keyword and it does seem to kind of either reignite or kind of change things around um but i would say more times though it's always the ad change but i would say you know sometimes keywords do do uh do help so i i don't know maybe experiment a little bit there um and i got to see like the facebook form it's my first time running a facebook form so um, but yeah, it's just instant forms. I just did what Mason said, maximum number of leads, $10 a day. Um, I excluded leads at 180 days, uh, site visitors last 30 days, IG engagers last 30 days, Facebook engagers last 30 days. Uh, you yeah, just, you share your, oh, was that? you share your screen. Oh yeah, yeah. I could share it for sure. First thing I would do is I, I wouldn't, um, you can share your screen. Yeah. I, just to make, just to check your setting. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you see it here? Yeah, if you scroll to the top of your ad set. So. Um, yeah, so if you click on edit and then you scroll. So what instant forms and then you scroll down a little bit. Um, maximize number of leads. What are the different options for performance goal? So um, it was just, I don't know why it doesn't let me change it right now. I don't know, but maybe I have to hit this. Um, but it was, uh, the other one was uh, maximum number of converting leads or something like that, where it's like high optimization, but it was weird. Is like when I clicked that, it would send me to a whole other Facebook support thing where it's like, hey, this is training on how to get your CRM integrated. Like it kind of mentions here to use this conversion leads performance goal. Um, you must set up CM CRM integration with the conversions API. So maybe just maybe I just learn a little bit of that, maybe test it. But um, what I would do yes. so, if you, uh, Daniel, um, I would if this is your first time because I don't really mess around with these uh, uh, either. Um, I don't know if Amon's mm -hmm. here. Um, I don't think Amon's here. Amon's really you know he's the goat when it comes to lead form. That's all like all he does. <laughs> maybe you can. Here's a few things I would do is just message him just to confirm. Uh, do a YouTube search just make sure you've got it set up correctly. I don't think nothing's really yeah. jumping. I would not. Mm -hmm. I, I I probably wouldn't mess around with the key uh, words right now. What I would do, honestly, and I honestly, what I would do is I would duplicate your ad set and I would try that again because your conversion is so low. It's like you know that point six five so yeah. low. I I have yeah. a hard time believing that. I don't I have a hard time believing that if we duplicate it, it's gonna find a good pocket. Um, mm -hmm. I know I sound like doom and gloom, but like it's it's not mm -hmm. sound ideal mm -hmm. right now. Well. Um, yeah, and I just have the same ad, uh, pretty much duplicated. Just same ad. Uh, I don't know if there's anything here that uh, another third, just like Facebook placements. So another thing I would try to do is, um, so step one, let's duplicate the ad set. Mm -hmm. uh, so description. Can you handle? Okay, so step one would be duplicating the ad set. Let's see what happens after like two days. See if we can get like a one percent. Step two is I would go to the Indian guy and I would just model his stuff. So what you can do is you can start by keeping the creative the same, but changing mm -hmm. like the banner around the top, the bottom, and then what his offer is. I don't know. If, like, mm -hmm. is, is it sell more Invisalign and pit? Is it sell more Invisalign implants, or is it like twenty new clients in twenty days, for example? Yeah, I can double check. Um. I was kind of like, yeah, so I could double check, but um, I think it was the same. It was like pretty much the same offer. It's like 20, 30, 20, 20 25 Invisalign slash implant patients. 
also, um, but he just had different copy. He had just like a uh, different way of saying it, right? So I would I would model that very closely, and then I'm pretty sure his headline was different than yours. Like I think some of it could be your mm -hmm. head. Your headline is sell more in Visline. I personally, my marketing, I never like to use subject. I never like to use subjective words like that. I always mm -hmm. use quantifiable things. I always say quantifiable things. So instead of saying selling more, I'll say sell, get 20 hydrofacials, add 20K revenue, something that's measurable because more is relative. Who knows what that means? So I would have the pretty much the exact same headline as him. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. That could be affecting things that headline there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see if he if it suddenly turns around, he would have done that for my client and then myself as well. So he'd be two for two there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll definitely uh, look into that. Um, yeah, I bought him closely because just the fact that one of his ads just hit and um, a lot of the he's definitely in my territory because I see a lot of the ads. He uses the same script, man, for every one of his dentists. They're all saying the same thing. And then I'm getting like three ads from all these local Orange County dentists saying uh, like literally the same thing verbatim. And I think he just tells them, I think he's remote and he just tells them, hey, set up a tripod in your office and then say this script because they're kind of like, you could tell they're kind of reading off a teleprompter. So I think he just figured out how to do video remote too. And just like, so I don't think he really sells the video thing. He just kind of leans into the whole... Uh, um i'll have to look at the copy again but so is that video testimonial yeah. firm or is that the video that he's running as ads for his clients uh videos he runs for his clients to get new patients um Makes sense. Yeah, yeah so i've seen a lot of that going around so he definitely has been in the orange county pocket um but i think he's remote uh but yeah i i have like watched a lot of his clients um some i stopped seeing them run ads some i see them continue um, sometimes he experiments and does some weird stuff like, Hey, get some free Lakers tickets. If you come in for a consultation and he ran that very remotely. Um, I've seen how he changes the seasonal too. So I've kind of been able to keep wind with my clients. And then like, there's a black Friday thing. I think I switched over when I saw him go seasonal with black Friday and I kind of duplicated and, um, yeah, my client ended up getting way higher, um, just surge of leads, um, and appointments just from me kind of modeling that. So um he's definitely on like uh like proofs in the pudding right but you know we'll see if it works for me on in terms of the you know um to the uh getting dental clients uh angle but I'm but sure. uh yeah i'm sure it would i'm sure it would. yeah so yeah so Sorry, um everything i'm suggesting is like moving closer and closer to that direction and then just get it to work and then we'll once we do it and it starts working for you, which I'm confident it will, mm -hmm. look into like trying to understand why it works in this particular niche. And then what we can do is we mm -hmm. can customize. So I always, as you know, model and then iterate from there. So I would mm -hmm. say we should move more in that direction. Just get it working. And then from there, we can go and tweak things up and make it more yours. So like, so step one, I mean, I pretty much gave you the steps. So step one is still mm -hmm. just just in case and then step two is uh move into his direction so like literally everything man like um like your headline your description like the text that's around your video like i would do that before even moving to like the tiktok ai angle i would move in the direction he's got so that's proven yeah um should have just bookmarked him but i was curious if he's changed his ads anytime recently one of his ads I saw was something inside of an office. He had like a bunch of his staff. Um, I think his name's Souk Bonds or Souk Baines. There he, there he is. So yeah, he's ran a lot. Um, these are all active. So, so yeah, if we look at his like, look at his headline. See that his headline's all the same. Your mm -hmm. headline is very different. His headline mm -hmm. is close to that quantitative 20 Invisalign and 45 days guaranteed. So I think that you like, I, I know, I, you know, I told you before, like, Hey, maybe it's the offer that we have, but like, I think it's the fact that we were driving traffic to a funnel now based off of everything I'm seeing. And I think that <laughs> you actually had was fine, which is a 20 Invisalign in 25 days or whatever. And like mm -hmm. having that description um, and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting how he does it. And then he is kind of doing the whole, like, it's still the same kind of thing. Like, it's just 20 new, right? And 
I think I'm even claiming higher. He's claiming kind of t just 20 and then just new implants slash Invisalign slash veneers. So he's definitely trying to, because I've talked to dentists, like, you know, when I did organic and some of them, like, they just want to do veneers. Some just want to go hard on implants. Some want to go niche on uh, Invisalign. So I think he's trying to cast a wide net there when I see that, um, just because I hear those, those are honestly the top three. I hear them wanting to sell, like, or wanting to work on or have a passion for. So um yeah i'll give it a shot for sure this is something i could literally like change up tonight so and then just please switch your can we, go, it. can we go to your copy really quick i want to compare yours to what he's got going on yeah this so is can you handle 20 new patient track 90 i guarantee results are referring to you the exclusive interval is only for seven you'll notice here yeah so it's, it's i think it's a different copy quite a bit actually i think your copy is mm -hmm. quite different than his yeah it's this very kind of like his is like mentioning pain points right away Yeah. Um, which, you know, pain is a pretty big motivator. So I can kind of obviously just theorize, but you kind of see why it's obviously throwing ad spend on it. You actually was following his IG and he uh, made a very public announcement that he's going to start running ads and he was going to like do a whole 90 day everyday posting going BTS of like him trying to make it work to scale it from 100K to 300K a month or something. And, uh, The first week he was just like, yeah, guys, it's not working. Like, check out the, look at the ad costs here. It's crazy, right? We're just going to keep doing stuff until it sticks and da, 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 da. So um, it's funny to see him here now. I haven't actually caught up, kept up with that, but um, yeah, he's. Uh... When I look at his stuff, like, I mean, to me, this screams, you know, I'm, I'm in one of Cole's program. And this seems very reminiscent of like literally what Cole Gordon goes over, like his exact copy, his framework, everything. Like here's our offer, here's the pain point, here's something, here's uh, the heaven island, and here's how our stuff works. We have a guarantee. Like it's very cookie cutter to Cole Gordon stuff. And so I, that's why I think he's he's going into. So yeah, step one is duplicate just to make sure. Mm -hmm. Step two is let's, I, I think that the move is to model this after that. Cool. So What you mentioned in terms of like TikTok AI, I'm going to, I always tell people, I always say, dude, like I might feel like I have a great idea, but like I always humble myself and I just do what the market is, is doing always. So we're, we're <laughs> going to, sure. we're most likely going to go here, man. Um, just okay. For sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm down. Um, and then maybe that's something that could play a role later on, but I have a good feeling about this one. So um, yeah, it'd be nice to see kind of the data roll in and see how it, uh, how it goes here. And do you ever get this guy's ads like these these ads? Oh yeah, I get them all the time. Okay. <laughs> this guy's, I always click on them so that I do. So, so the reason I'm asking is that means that you should probably you probably have screen record if not screen record his exact questions that he asked in his form. Like yeah, yeah. So I screen I went through as much as I could without giving out my info. Um, maybe I should have a ghost Facebook account. I haven't gone that hard yet, <laughs> but uh, I have a uh, I have screen recorded his whole like actual facebook form and it was an old recording before he ran these ads so maybe i'll try to see if i can find that again just to see if he's changing anything but it was just basic it was just like you know um i don't know if i could see it here within the ad manager um because i had the form made but basically it was just um something facebook form if you see him again just record the new stuff just to be up to cut up just to, to be up to date make sure it's yeah um But yeah, I don't think it'll show. Maybe advanced preview. Uh, maybe not. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just like, yeah, you know, are you a dentist? And then are you a practice owner? So just kind of that. And then it's just autofill the form. He he wasn't too like super elongated or anything. He was, it was kind of simple. Um, But yeah, uh, yeah, I'm down to make this change and then kind of just update you on where that goes. That's good, man. Um, So You know, homework, I would say is like, if I'm you, I would, Mm -hmm. we can go inside the Trello board and you can take some of his ads and what we can do is you can start writing out the scripts and be like, okay, here's exactly his. So, you know, the way I would do is like paragraph one inside Trello would be like, here's his exact script. And then the paragraph below is like, here's my version of it, where you slightly tweak it and make it your own. Mm -hmm. so, do that. so that's maybe mm -hmm. another thing I can give you. So we can proact and, you know, get ready for, for next week. Yeah. Yeah. And Trello copy his and then uh post my version yep cool yeah I mean, duplicate ad set model ending guides text and headlines with within the ad level uh in trello copy is 
um, his, and then pretty much post mine right after to kind of have a, I think that's good. That's kind of like where my head was at. I just wanted like validation, but also you came up with some other ideas. Like I didn't know about duplicating that said I didn't um, go all the way into thinking to go into like going in his direction with the copy. So um, yeah, definitely helps me kind of like know where to navigate. Cause at some point I was just like, Oh, where am I, where am I going? <laughs> so oh, this, this is the part where you kind of, you know, it happens to all of us. You're floating around like a grocery bag and the wind. <laughs> Uh, eventually it just it snaps just like for him you know when he was posting his journey he was saying it wasn't working it wasn't working and then finally it snaps yeah. so step by step it's duplicate the ad set step two is go in and i would say if if we duplicate the ad set and we run it for let's say like five days no traction or it's not really working so here's the here's my but here's my thing to you if after three to five days your conversion is still 0.5 unique click-through rate and your cpm is still through the roof your cost per lead is is not good then the next step in the process is what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate everything that he's doing pretty much to a T, including his copy, his headline, everything. You don't need to switch out your video. What we can do is we can slightly switch up the text above and below. Actually, yeah. I mean, instead of saying video plus dental ads, like I would just focus on like his offer, which is whatever it is, like 20 new, uh, 20 new clients within whatever time frame. And then- yeah this that yeah like that like we'll just use that text above and below your video you don't need to reshoot your video and mm -hmm. and ideas let's see what happens with that and if everything goes well well then we don't even need to shoot anything but if for some reason it doesn't right. work, well then the next step is then to shoot yeah so that's sure. a step like what i would do if i were you okay so tonight it's pretty simple just duplicate the ad set and then run it same same without any changes yep and, and the idea behind that is just to see if maybe we can find a different pocket of people. Maybe it's a bad mm -hmm. pocket. My theory yeah. is that that's not yeah. the case, but we're just being safe. Before we yeah. we jump ship and say, we're before we say, screw you to the strategy, it's mm -hmm. one last. One more, one more run through. And uh, that's something I could obviously share the numbers and update you on Wednesday too. So since I'll be talking to you then, I could kind of be like, okay, I made that that tweak on Monday. And then um, obviously I don't know if that's enough time to see the data, but at least it gives you kind of a checkpoint, um, kind of oh, get a pulse on it. About three to five days is, is like, you should within three to five days, we should be seeing something. Something yeah. for sure. So yeah, duplicate ad set. Um, and then just kind of wait and see, let the data roll in. And based off that, we'll move on to the next direction if so. Yep. And what we'll do is pretty much we're like copying everything modeling everything ever so slightly we'll tweak stuff ever so slightly so it's not 100 percent his and then we're going to keep mm -hmm. your this way mm -hmm. it's still yours we're still going to make yeah it. yeah because still mind me yep still yours we still have the video is still unique to yours but we're modeling everything very similarly and then if for some reason that doesn't work then what we'll do is we'll do a rehaul in terms of the video shoot oh cool yeah yeah, simplified because I was already thinking, oh, I should be making automations on this Facebook form. So if it triggers, it'll give all these things and do this and do that. And I'm like, well, let's make sure the Facebook forms works first before I just build a bunch of infrastructure behind it. <laughs> so for sure. But uh, yeah, I, I have more hope on the form of Facebook. The fact that everyone is doing it, I still don't get discouraged if mine doesn't just take off because all I did was simply switch to a Facebook form. I know there's probably more to it than just that. But as long as we kind of have the right kind of structure in terms of like we're on the form, then uh, I feel a little more confident that whatever changes we make within that form structure, um, you know, there's there's something there that could pop off, you know. Um, I think yeah. one of the, um, other any questions, comments, concerns or other things you wanted to go over? Uh, no, I mean. No, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, you pretty much answered everything I could think of. So, cool. <laughs> All right, sounds good, man. Thank well, you so much. You're welcome, man. This week, uh, next time, I think we're gonna see. Uh, I think we're gonna this week, next time, or at least by mid next week. This week, next time, or at least by mid next week, I think we're gonna have a little bit more traction. That's my that's my theory. For sure. Cool. All right, man. Well, um, can let me uh, can you stop sharing your screen for a second? Oh yeah, yeah. And then um. You know, I'll circle back to you, uh, Revere, if you have more questions, okay? All right. Thank you. Um, okay, let me close out of these guys.
And then Mr. Ethan Hill, I think I got you next. Um, before started, um, yeah, can you give me just a second here, Ethan? I'll be right back. Yeah, no problem. Yo, Adam. What's up, Mason? What's up, dude? What's How up, man? Yeah, we've been pretty good. Um, got a few questions for you guys, but overall, we're doing great. We just launched uh, a new campaign for our gym client today because the six-week challenge starts this week. Um But dude, that campaign for the six week challenge, we had 27 leads in the past week come in for that. Uh, so they're all, they're super stoked. And we started running a new campaign for a kid's camp that they have every year. Um, apparently it's like, it's like a kid's summer camp kind of deal. And we just launched that today and we've gotten eight leads from it so far. We've only spent like 10 bucks. yeah so yeah everything's going great we definitely have our plate full as far as dog grooming stuff but i'll i'll catch you guys up later after ethan awesome man good to hear me I'm, I'm yeah i'm glad to hear like i know we hopped into that whole gym thing and it was just kind of like uh we'll see what happens and it's just it's nice to hear all this this beautiful stuff that's happened for you guys and for them i'm sure yeah I'm, I'm like they're they're probably pumped up and stoked for so far they are Yeah, they are. They're sticking around. So that's a good sign. Good for you guys, man. Thank you, bro. Mr. Hill. What's going, going on? on? What's going on, brother? Man, how you doing? I'm good. Ethan, Hilly, Billy. Mason, Rosie, Wosie. Nah, dude. You're not good at improv. <laughs> no, nah, it was a good day. Did you guys... Uh, or Mason, you saw the eclipse. I don't think, Koshik, you're close enough to the... center of it but i did yeah i i did see it did I, I posted on my uh my instagram story today it was so crazy did you you yeah. guys didn't see who did anyone just show a hands who who did see it or like did actually get to experience that the solar eclipse just me and ethan or i felt like an asshole so i'm at the gas station right when it's happening i'm yeah. filling up my gas i'm heading to the gym and this lady looks at me she's like are you seeing the eclipse i'm like not really and she's like you want my glasses i'm like no i'm good You should have seen her face. She was like so butter. She was so sad. Like I reject her. I'm like, no, I just don't give enough fucks. Oh my goodness. And so I get in my car, I'm driving. And then it's the, and me and Dan were talking about this. Like, I just see everybody's like looking up and I'm like, dude, this is something out of the movies. Like we had like an alien invasion going on. I'm just like, whatever. I just, I gotta do, I gotta do arms and then hit this, uh, hit, hit this, this coaching session. Um, <laughs> and what, everybody's just outside looking at the sun. Not a big astronomer. Sure. I mean, it's not, I mean, well, I'll tell you what, if, if there's an astronomy sign on a girl's profile on her Tinder profile, like I'm out, if that tells you anything. No, that's <laughs> so valid. That's so valid. That's funny. Are, are you, are you, I don't mean to offend you, Mr. Hill. Are you a big astronomer? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, no, no. Yeah. I just, I, I've only lived through, I was actually the last eclipse that went through America. I was in Hawaii. And Hawaii was like totally out of the way. So I was kind of bummed. This is weird. I was bummed that I was in Hawaii. So I was actually really looking forward to this eclipse. Um, but it was cloudy. So I, it was dark a little bit, but that was kind of it. it. It was kind of dark for us. I mean, we're not that far. We're I'm in Ohio, so I'm not that far from you guys. It wasn't like blackout or anything. It was just a little bit. 
It looked like it was like 7 p.m. That's what it looked like. I don't know. Yeah, not super exciting. Oh. But Aside from that, what else is going on with you, Mr. Hill? not too much. Just buying more crypto every day. Taking uh, as much time as I can to learn the markets. Um, working on the ads. I have a, a couple. I haven't. I stopped taking on like small projects for like videography um, for that business. Just kind of been consolidating a lot more. So I have a couple projects. They don't take a ton of time, obviously. I'm still, you know, this is my main focus, um, but those are good. Um, I got a few wedding inquiries this week. Um, so that that component's staying nice. I'm not taking I only took on 14 weddings for this year for this 2024. So I'm taking it pretty easy. Um, last year it was like 25 or something like that, kind of crazy. But um, yeah, so everything's good. I'm stoked. I got a couple of leads. I got three leads. Two of them did not answer. The one yeah, he did text me back. He just said yes. Like I asked him very simple questions just to get a response. And then he, I asked him if he could uh, jump on today at 12 at noon. And um, he said yes the other day and then just ghosted me. Um, but I did get one call today. He was super cool out of Maryland. And I walked him through the discovery call, like script, the prompt, like get to know them, what's their problem, that sort of thing. Um, and I kind of, gave like an impromptu pitch and he's like yeah that sounds sweet i'd love to learn more i'm like all right let's jump on a call and he said yep that works and uh so i booked it for next monday so that i could have enough time to figure out a plan come up with a strategy for that um obviously i still need to figure out what i'm going to include in it fully and, and what i'm going to sell to him but he was stoked he's like I said, yeah. So, you know, so you're aware of what the ad said is five weddings closed in the next three months or you don't pay. And he's like, that's crazy. Like I'm, I'm super invested. Like that's, that's makes total sense. He's like, so if you don't give me five weddings, I don't pay at all. And he, I'm like, yes. And then the the thing that you do, and, and I know someone earlier mentioned it as well, is like, if you can get a hundred leads per month, do you think you can close at least two of them and at least one of them? And he's like, yeah. So, um, so I, I use that. And, and so, yeah, got a sales call on the first discovery call. So initially you said how many, you said initially you had three people that booked a call with you. Is mm -hmm. that three total? Yeah. Just three leads. I think I put 80, 80 bucks in. So it's about 25, 30 bucks per lead now. So thir thir three people. And then you said one of the guys you had a conversation with and then he ghosted mm -hmm. and then so this is the second out of the third, which like you yeah. had, a, so yeah. this guy texted back and forth, you responded and then you were able to hop on a call. And then one of them is just like no response at all. No response. I sent him an email. I called him three times. I texted him twice. I did everything I possibly could to get in touch with this dude. And, um, cause like $25 for a lead, like that's, that's a, that's a nice dinner. Like I want to take this, you know, I want to get this conversation with this guy. So, um, but yeah, no to no avail unfortunately so okay so the one that ghosted so uh so you're asking for name email his phone number for the guy not that address. you not ad email address sorry name email, name email or phone number. yeah Those are, so when you text that you text them um are you what what are you are you getting their instagram when you text them no, so the the first one was on on I don't even remember when. Actually, it was on like Wednesday or Thursday of last week, and I was in class and and it was later in the night, and the call was for the next day. So I actually didn't reach out to him whatsoever. Um, the one today I did nurture him. He he did it on Sunday, so I texted him like an hour or two after, and I was like, hey, you know, thanks for um, booking a call. Looking forward to our chat. And then I texted him again. Uh, earlier this morning, it was like, hey, just confirming you're available um, for our call later today. And uh, he said, yep, absolutely. And then he also thanked me on the call. He's like, thanks for thanks for reaching out. I appreciate that. Um, so that was that was nice to hear that. So basically, when somebody opts in, you're just saying, hey, thank you for booking whatever. I'm looking forward to having a conversation. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, for yeah, for the one that jumped on a call with me. Yeah. And so and then the day of. You're basically saying, hey, you know, like, 
do you need a link or whatever? I'm sorry, like looking forward to our conversation later today, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then for the sales call, it's like the same strategy that you teach. Like I'll probably send them a text sometime later this week and be like, Hey, here's one of my wedding videos. Here's my website. Here's a blog. I actually started doing, I have been doing blogs for wedding couples and I realized I should probably do blogs for wedding videographers as well, just for, just for fun. Like I, I enjoy writing. Um, so I just, I've been throwing those up on my website. So I'll probably send them one of those uh, later this week. And then obviously the day, what's the strategy the, the night before send them the link or, or what's, what was the strategy for that? Yeah. So a few things, um, before I forget, there's a rule and this is just important for everybody. It's like, typically if you're going to charge high ticket up front, if you're going to try to, it's typically one hour per thousand dollars. So what I always tell people, I say, Hey, you need to watch at least, I want you to watch the Center Market Chico workshop, if not watch at least half of it. Why am I saying that? Because of how much I charge. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a, an important thing that they're like, when it comes to trying to get people to consume stuff, you want to get them to consume as much as possible. So when it comes to seven days, I know that you're in a place where you're just trying to figure stuff out and that's where you've given yourself some time. And that's fine. Yeah. Most people in your case, they want to like do it within like two days or one day with your kind of funnel. When it comes to my yeah. kind of funnel, you want to seven days because people actually go through the course material. Um, mm -hmm. And so just for, the, so yeah, like I think the blog is a good idea. I mean, honestly, I'd be saying stuff now. Like if you, ju you just had the call with him today, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple yeah. hours ago. Yeah, I, I would, if I were you, I would send stuff immediately. Another mm -hmm. the reason I was asking you about Instagram, by the way, is because what I've noticed in my, for me, for filmmakers is like, it is so much more powerful to DM somebody versus text somebody. I've noticed over and over again, not, not an accident. It's not an opinion. It's a fact. Every single time somebody I have a, every time on time, I don't have somebody's Instagram because they don't have an Instagram or they don't give it to me. And I can't get a hold of them. Whenever I text them stuff to hop on a sales car, whatever, it's like, it's like very low, very low, like intent. But whenever I use my mm -hmm. Instagram, it's because I've got a little bit of a following. I've got a little bit of clout. I've got some stuff there. I've got some value there that people take a lot more seriously. Every single mm -hmm. time I just through DM, it's hundred percent response rate. And so what I'm asking, the reason I bring this up is it might be a good idea. This might be something you want to test around or play around with is to, uh, you know, um, I'll share, can I share my, actually, yeah. Um, so. Oh, damn. You can go, you can do that right through high level. On yeah. Instagram. Oh, no shot. That's great. I got to do that. I did not know that. So Instagram.com. So you're the DM demon. Dude, everything is it, it really <laughs> down sure. I would say the thing that I figured out that like I don't know anyone else or that is in my space that's figured out is like DMs. So somebody hops in, they purchase a mar uh somebody's video marker. Welcome aboard. Cool if I drop you a voice note. Again, I do I don't go into a voice note because if I do, in my experience, it doesn't work. Because mm -hmm. people like get anxiety, they're like, who the fuck is it? Why is this guy sending me a DM? Am I in trouble? <laughs> And they just don't, they don't listen to it. But if I say, Hey man, welcome aboard, smiley face, uh, emoji, can I slot? They're like, yeah. Then what I'm doing is I'm basically pushing for, can I send you a loom video? They say, yeah. Once they say yeah to a loom video, uh, typically it doesn't have, like, he's just a little bit of a talk, which is a good thing. So mm -hmm. this is here I typically don't have then. So typically again, cool. If I send you a loom video, I text just to make sure he understands. They say, yes. After that, there typically isn't all this stuff right here. Typically, mm -hmm. then I go into this, which is like, this is my methodology. This is what um, I was speaking with Jorge about. I don't know if you were you were listening there, but I was explaining. Jorge was like, you know, what kind of video should I? I was like, explain your method. Explain how you get people results. So I explain licensing here. And so this is my weed out process. If I if somebody comes here, they watch this video and they don't respond, then I'm not going to create a 20, 30 minute loom video for them. Sure. If they do respond, then I will do that. So the reason I'm bringing this up is if you have a video like this, on your Instagram, okay, Ethan? This is, I'd be making a mental note, writing this down. Create mm -hmm. a video. If I'm you, check this video out first of all, watch this video, read the copy, and you'll see what I'm doing here. And you'll see why I'm, this is so important. Then if I'm you, I'm gonna create something like this on your Instagram. How the vacation stuff works or whatever, right? Or I'm sorry, how the uh, destination wedding ad strategy works. 
Then what you would do is you would, if I were you, again, when somebody opts in, hey, John, I look forward to our conversation. Hey, by the way, can I get your Instagram? And then you DM them through Instagram and, or you can text me like, yo, I just shot you a DM. Now the conversation side of the DMs, you're leveraging your, your DM. You can send him something over. He's going to be checking this out. He's going to binge your shit. He's like, oh shit, this Ethan guy's legit. Word. Sell it. That makes sense. Trust is being built. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Instagram is such a great way to build trust and like it's on autopilot for you. There's one guy that I listen to. I forget his name, but he, he says such a great, it's the best dating app these days because yeah. you have everything there. It's all out and laid for. They can see what they, uh, what they're getting into. So yeah, that makes total sense. Uh, I'll start doing that with the next couple of leads that come in. Um, I'll try and get them through DM. I mean, do you suggest Very with quick. really Sorry. quick to this thing is, and this is something to test out is if it doesn't drop your conversion rate. Some what I would do is this. This is what I used to do. I would actually collect name, uh, email address, Instagram. I don't actually, that. Yeah. So it it's like, if I were you, I would maybe consider name, email address, phone number, and Instagram. That's kind of a lot. Don't you think? Like, I, I feel like they're already going out of their way to put in their information. Like there's sometimes when I will be like genuinely interested in something and they'll be like one too many questions. I'm like, mm -mm. like, I don't know you. I'm not going to give you that information. Um, but so that, with, the, with the six figures in, in six weeks funnel, what did we, did we not get their Instagram from that? Or what info did we get? You got name, email, phone number. It was an application where you got their email or their Instagram. Got you. So, and the, and the thank you page also, they DM you, remember? They're shooting you a DM. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. For me, it's like, I, I just think the Instagram is so, so here's the thing. You, you test out one or two things. The first thing you test out is what I'm saying right now, which is like, you just get, you ask them right away, like, yo, looking forward to having a conversation with you. Also, can I uh, check out some of your work on your, also, can I get your Instagram? I'd love to check out some of your work. That's what, that's what Amman does. Amman basically goes like, yo, can I get your website so I can learn a little bit more about your services? And then he's having a conversation with them back and forth. So I didn't, I didn't see like, based on what you shared with me, he may have showed up because it was just like within the, the day, it was very fast. You could have lost the other person because it was too long mm -hmm. and you didn't actually nurture them. So what I'm hearing is not, that's not nurture. What I'm hearing is just like a, Hey, looking forward to think nurture. When I say nurture, I'm talking about like actually getting value, like getting yeah. value, building some kind of trust, you know, checking out and be like, yo, I checked out your Instagram. I really like this video. Also, can you check this video? I think it'll show you X, Y, Z. That's nurture. And so perhaps yeah. the reason that first person to show up is because that wasn't done. Um, so again, step one thing is either try this where you DM them, try to get the Instagram right away and then shoot them a DM and try to have a conversation with the rest of it on the Instagram and leverage that. Option two is if that doesn't work for you or that's not working as well, then on your calendar page, collect the Instagram. So maybe you go name, Instagram, email. Maybe that's what you do. Instead of name, email, phone number. Maybe you try that. Okay. I'll test it out. And then, so yeah, I got three leads for 80 bucks. Um, it's I've been spending 15 bucks a day. Do you think I should ramp up ad spend? Do you think I should keep it at 15 bucks? I mean, at this, it's been a lead like every other day, every two and a half days. So it's it's kind of slow um, with 15 bucks. But I mean, what do you what are your thoughts? Yeah. Like you asked that question of like, Kushi, what can I be doing? It's like, it's everything we spoke about, which is like optimizing your funnel. It's optimizing one, it's optimizing and doing higher volume. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that answers your question. One, optimize, optimize your like nurturing process, all that. Um, and then two is ramp up. So how would you ramp up? If I were you, I would duplicate your ad set and I would try to maybe make that higher budget. I wouldn't, touch, would I, I would not touch what your current ad set because I don't like to touch things that are already working. That's my philosophy. My philosophy is like, something already, yeah, I always like con consider whatever something is working. I just consider that my control. Mm -hmm. Um. So duplicate the ad set, duplicate the ad itself. Okay. Ad duplicate the ad set and then increase the budget on the new ad set. And don't touch anything else. Don't touch anything else. And then shut off 
the other one? No, I guess that's up to me. I'll just keep it mine. Keep it, keep it on. Again, whenever, so the rule is this, whenever you have something that's working, don't touch this with the 10 feet pole ever. And then, so in your case, what I'm saying is you have this ad that's already working, $50, you know, bookings, $25 bookings, duplicate this ad set. And then this ad set, mess around with the budget on this one. So on this one, you know, I don't know, would you say you're spending 15 bucks? Mm -hmm. So take this ad set and spend 30 bucks on this one. Okay. And then don't touch this no matter what, unless this like, and then if for some reason, when you duplicate this ad set, and then this one is like getting good results and this one is like, keep them both. If this one is getting good results and then this one is tanking, um, then what I would probably do is I would probably shut this one off after you know for sure. And then this becomes your new control. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, okay, perfect. And then I guess I will take your, the, the sales walkthrough demo that I have and I'll optimize that and make that look good for weddings. And then I'll send that over to you and Mason for approval. I, yeah, I definitely wanted to give myself some, some time to work on that. Um, yeah, so I guess I just need to spend a few hundred more bucks, spend like 500 to a thousand bucks and, and then see if I can close somebody. Um, I I'm willing to bet that like just, just the way that that guy was talking and, and his eagerness without a doubt in my mind, I could close them at like a 1000 to $3,000. Like I know, like if I'm like, Hey, like I can get you these weddings and you're going to make this much profit in this much time. Like it's kind of a no brainer. So I think the biggest difficulty, the biggest hurdle will be the 5k mark. Um, if I jump on five calls or 10 calls and nobody seems to want to pay the 5k, do I jump down to 4k, jump down to 3k? Cause like, I still don't a little bit of imposter syndrome. Like I don't necessarily have those results for other people yet. So I still need to get over that hurdle as well. Um, what are your thoughts? I think that based off of what I've seen in the market and what other people are charging, you should be able to charge 5k. I think that if you wanted to baby step and charge like, you know, 2k for the first one and then increase the 3k and then increase to five, if you wanted to do that, that makes sense. And that's what I typically see actually what yeah. people do, they have a certain amount that they charge and they are constantly bumping it up. And then what happens is you reach a certain threshold where like it, like your conversion rates drop so much that it doesn't make sense to bump it or lower. Like there's an optimal spot. So that's my best piece of the best piece of advice I can give you is like slowly bump it up. Yeah. I'd like to, I just so I can like get a close under my belt and just like start doing this. Like I'm kind of inclined to close the first one at, at 3k or something. And then obviously ad spend on top of that, they'll pay for ad spend. Um, but that's, that's a start. I think I'm more comfortable with that just cause I don't, I can't say, Oh yeah, look at all these, 50 videographers that I've worked with. So, um, yeah. And then definitely next one, 4k, next one, 5k. So, um, just to get, just to get in the swing of it, but yeah. I, I haven't told Mason this, but I'm, I'm, I'm doubling what we're charging. I've been like sleeping on it for quite some time. I was looking at all of our numbers and I was just like, when I charge people like 5k and then they resign for another three months, I've noticed like if I, I if I've noticed, and I don't, I don't even know why I'm bringing this up. This isn't super pertinent. Actually it is pertinent, I guess, but like, I've noticed if I charge people 5k and then I let people do $400 a month, what people do is they don't do the work for $400 a month. And then they always like, uh, don't continue. Mm -hmm. And so the people that are extremely successful, I've noticed are the ones where I don't make it easy for them. So for example, Aman, he opt in for the full price and then he decided not to go at it because he didn't want to resign. And then he finally came back in, but I didn't let him in for $400 a month. I, I said, Hey, it's going to be two grand. And guess what? He actually fucking won. Every mm -hmm. single time I let people in for four hundred dollars a month, they don't win. Interesting. I could, be, I could be proven wrong. So, in other words, what I'm going to do now is because I've realized like people really need about six months to a year to find success. What I'm doing now is I'm going to say two thousand eighty three dollars a month, or one time five thousand dollar payment, or if you want to save the most amount of money, it's going to be nine k for six months. So I'm just increasing the price, and then mm -hmm. my experience is like. Whenever I increase the price, it just serves me better every time. I agree. I think, I mean, absolutely. There's, of course, like the psychology behind you pay more, you're going to 
put more effort into it. So yeah, that's definitely a good strategy. I totally agree with that. I was I was looking at the um are you familiar with Luke Belmar? It's yes. either not like a, an influencer, he's like a skinny dude, he's kind of like another Andrew Tate. Can he do? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he's a big on crypto. He made some good crypto plays. Um, but I I reached out to him through DM, um, of course, chatting it up over there. And he's he's selling a program for like a crypto group. And all the groups that I'm in right now are like 100 bucks, 200 bucks a month, something like super nominal, like easy to digest. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's one ETH. And I'm like, oh, shit. That's like, that's a major, that's a major, that's a real program now. That'll be a 5K program for um for that group and and like he's sharing all the wins like obviously there's a lot of of you know value behind it but like psychologically it's now it's no longer like a discord or a telegram group it's like all right like now we're gonna make this happen like i need to make that money back from the investment so definitely anyways i just that was a little little chatting little yap i mean it's you know at the end of the day it's like uh most important thing to understand is like like two things is, you know, re retention, retention equals uh, results plus relations. There's a lot of R's in here. <laughs> <laughs> the three R's. R. Yeah. So retention equals results plus relations. And so, you know, results is like you just getting people great results. Like you just knowing how to do the thing that you're selling people on result re relations is like, you knowing how to upsell, how to downsell, what the touch point should be, how you should position it. A lot of people don't understand, like the way you position it is super important. All right. Um, and so that's the first part of it. The second part that it's, it's important to understand is just like your bank account. There's a lot of whys in here, <laughs> your bank account, your client's bank account, and then their customer, their, 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 their customers. And so, you know, I'm huge, I'm very adamant, like focus on this and funnel this over to your bank account. Um, but like all that said and done, it's just like, it's so hard to do, like just charge people higher up front, just charge people more up front. It's just so much easier for you. It's so much easier for everybody. So much easier for them. Um, so I know you're not there yet. I know, you know, where you're just talking about like 3k for now, get your feet wet and all that stuff. But like you, you, you'll be moving in that direction. Like in my experience, the more you charge, it just makes everybody's life easier. It allows you to hire team members, fulfill on it, have more cash flow, just everything. But anyways, at this point, I, I, I know that you, you, you get, you get my point here. Um, that's it, man. Spend, spend more money on ads and then keep refining your sales process. Uh, you know, as time progresses, you're gonna need more, you know, content and stuff like that. Um, that you can send people to sell your methodology, sell how your stuff works. You Absolutely. Oh, also one thing, this is so funny. This is like crazy. Like never in a million years would you have anticipated this. I was on call with my editor um, who does like a lot of my commercial editing and, and some wedding stuff. Um, he's been a super valuable, super, super valuable asset. Um, I built up a good relationship with him. So um, super good component but i was talking to him about an, another project that we're working on and he said he was getting married in a few months and i'm like oh no way like i was running an app an offer on facebook about doing weddings in uh, europe he's like oh well you know if you're available i'd love to have you and um so I, i'm actually available for the date so i think i'm gonna shoot his wedding over in portugal so it'll be cool to have more content i'm probably gonna bring one of my buddies so we'll do some more bts but yeah, that's in that's in July. So it was a cool, it's a small world that I that I was able to uh, to close that wedding in uh, in Europe, nonetheless. So, so yeah, dude, go all out with that, man. Like I I here's a funny story. Uh, <laughs> I shot a music video and I talked about this inside the workshop. It was 20k. It's a music video for 20k. I flew out to LA for it. You know how much I pocketed from that? If you brought on a bunch of people, I don't know. I'm did Adam, you bring on a bunch of people? I don't guess. Five? Yeah, five? I was gonna say I was gonna say five, yeah. Eight hundred. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Or all of it went. Two. All of it. 
all of it went towards hiring like a guy to film me, document the whole thing, other people to make the video look cool as fuck, plane tickets, food, the whole shebang. And guess what? That music video was seven years ago. And guess what? I still make money from it because I still use that material right. in marketing. That's yeah. literally like uh, Mason, you know how you asked me about that one song uh, with G Easy? Yes, yeah. my God. that shit like the outro like that's all from like that music video shoot i still use yeah it. i told <clears throat> i told kashik i don't know if you guys know this or not but like one of the reasons i actually bought the course is i felt mad hype when the when the webinar came up and like gz came up and it was like five four three two one with the countdown i was like oh okay this is hype like i gotta i gotta hang out with this guy i'm not even kidding <laughs> i think i told kashik that i'm like yo dude that was so cool like i want to be just like you yes. love it love it But like true story, man, like I, that's I, I, I saw it like I knew it. I knew going in like I was like, I'm going to go all out on that content. I'm going to use it for branding in the future. Mm -hmm. So anyways, when I tell you, like, go all out, like, dude, go all out, like make this huge, like plan, like get like one, two people, you know, like really plan every single day, like what you're going to be filming. Try to maybe create a lesson out of it. Try to create a webinar out of it. Like really put a lot of thought into it. Maximize it. Like, definitely. That's really I'm glad you said that. Like freaking document yourself, like walking into the plane and all that stuff, like everything. Oh, yeah. If, you look, if you're inside of like the airport, like like sitting with your fun friends, like maybe show some of your personality, like crack a joke and be like, oh, this person's doing this. Uh, LOL. I can't wait till we get there. Like, seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm not even joking. Like sell the crap out. YouTuber program now or something. Oh, my goodness. Huh? Nothing. I, I said, is this a YouTuber uh -huh. program? Basically. Yeah. yeah. so crucial all the stuff is so crucial maximize it squeeze the hell out of that juice uh that lemon absolutely absolutely i think when i graduate i feel like social media in a lot of ways is like your ticket to better networks and better connections so when i graduate college i, I definitely want to focus more on like building up my personal brand as well on the internet um it was nice back when i was doing like tiktoks it got kind of tiring though so i guess i want to find like a healthy medium of people I really resonate with and, and get into rooms I want to be in. But um, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely do that for the, for the trip. But thank you for that. I, I would say like, I agree with you, but like, it's important to understand like everything I've gone over, like I was, I, I didn't see the full picture at the time. Like I didn't fully know how I was going to use the content. I just knew I was going to use it somehow. And so after everything was shown, after I gather everything, Then the next step in the process was now I had to build out my webinar funnel. I had to have an ad. I had to have this. I had to have that. And now it's like, okay, here's the content I've already shot. Here's how I can use it. And so the content I shot, all that stuff I'm talking about is, is not like to just have miscellaneous content on social media and do the Hormozy thing. I don't believe in that. And Hormozy doesn't believe in that either. And Sam Ovens doesn't believe it. And nobody believes in that. Like creating that content and all that stuff, nobody believes. Like anybody that has an actual business, you know, like I'm serious. Like nobody believes in that. What, what I'm talking about is like create this content to create your assets for your funnel. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like use all this content to create an asset. And that's what I'm saying. Like what I'm saying, what I'm saying to you guys is like, that was seven years ago. And guess what? I still use that content today in the same funnels. That's what I'm trying to get across. I don't use that content. I blast it out all over social media. I have like one social media post a year. Sucks. <laughs> I mean, like I have like one social media post a year and I like post stories. That's it. When mm -hmm. I, and I post stories not to make money. I just do it because I feel like it. Those are good. I always read those. They're Thanks. fire. Yeah. And, and they're fire because I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm just trying to like give people genuine value. And so what I will tell you, what I have noticed is like, I do, I will tell you this, like what you're talking about, where like getting into certain rooms and stuff, I will tell you, like, I see, I see influencers, right? Again, we spoke about this last week. We talked about the business owner and the influencer, the business yeah. owner. I will tell you is when it comes to the influencer, like, yeah, like the best way to get into these kinds of rooms is like being a YouTuber, being an, you know, TikToker, being an influencer. If you can crack the code on that, like, dude, it gets you into some fucking rooms. Like it'll get you in room with like Ryan Pineda, for example. Like I saw this one kid with curly hair. He's like African-American, has like a little bit of a weird accent or voice. He's got a little bit of a lisp. I don't know if you, you probably know what I'm talking about. He's got like a purple background. He's always on Instagram. 
And mm-hmm. I was like, who the fuck is this kid? Next thing I know, a year later, I see him on fucking Ryan Pineda's podcast. Like, yeah, so 100%. But it's like, those are two different lifestyles. Those are two Definitely. different. Definitely. There's one guy on Instagram who does marketing agencies, and I want to send you his profile. But look out for that on Instagram in the next couple of days. Um, he has, it's a very like, it's not like influencery and like that kind of thing, but like he shows off his lifestyle a little bit. And I think for, from a client's perspective, it's like, Oh, okay. This guy's like reliable. He's trustworthy. He, you know, obviously he's done well for himself. And then from like, uh, obviously he has coaching programs and this sort of thing, but from like an outsider perspective, you're like, wow, this dude is, this is pretty cool. Like he seems like he's living a happy, healthy life. Um, but he's not like viral or he doesn't like post like, polarizing things on the internet like influencers do so i think more of like a like a low-key like i don't know i just want people to like associate me with business and and getting results and like that sort of thing so i don't know i guess i have to think about it more but um i think i want to build my build a personal brand a little bit more just for fun just for the banter i think i think you know you know i i think like even like i do too like I'm, I'm preaching, I'm preaching, but like every day I fight with this shit. Like, let me see if I can. It's the fact that you want to do cool shit, but you know, yeah, I, I know he's gonna show. Yeah, like this is like shit that like I have like a thing I want to share with the world. Like, there's like this fucking story I want to make a video on it, and this has been in my mind for like three fucking years. This has been in my mind for years. The stoic thing. I, I've got these ideas, but like I can't. I don't have the time to film them. I don't have the time to create them. Yo, that second one is crazy. You can't out fuck to you. <laughs> Interesting. So I it's like, like that. so it's like, you know, I, I there's things I want to share, but like I don't have the time to. And what I'm trying to get across to you, Ethan, is like if you want to do this at a high level, like at, if you want to get to 100 k a month, if you want to do that, then what is required of you is to focus on building your funnel, your machine. Step one is building your machine. Step two is figuring out how to consistently get people results. Step three is hiring and firing people. Then now you can go and create content and and have peace of mind. Like I like I said, I, I literally fight. Like I want to make this stuff so bad. I don't have the time. I can't mm. do it. Um, but um, you can do it. You just don't make the time for it. You can do it. Oh my god. Right. You know you're right. You're hundred percent right. I can, I can do it, but to me, it's not worth it. Yeah, it's not your. It, it doesn't drive sales in, in direct, most efficient way like a sales funnel does. Um, I think you should consider it. I think you should make like. Do you post anything on YouTube? Because like I I binge watch like I've I've worked with people just from finding them on YouTube, and I think you have a lot of value and knowledge to share that ton of people on youtube would absolutely love to see like i could see myself just like watching your content on youtube like like on this not that i'm weird but usually on saturdays i don't go out to the club i just like watch youtube videos and learn a bunch of shit so um i mean like podcasts like i would watch three hours of you on a podcast without a doubt that would be cool that'd be cool that's interesting you bring that up me and mason recorded like a three hour for our podcast but we were just talking about random ass shit <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was the funniest shit because like i would ask him a question and he would respond and he would like he would like stutter i was like bro you almost got it let's do another take <laughs> and so it's like it's like a three hour podcast but like yeah. an hour of it is me and him cracking up yeah <laughs> and like 40 minutes is like actual value mm-hmm so they were like, like a nightmare to cut this up and actually try to make this look like an actual podcast. There was like there was a time that he kept asking me the same question over and over and over again, and I'd like formulated the answer a different way like eight times, and finally I just looked at him, and I was just like, "We." He was just looking at me. He was just looking at me. I didn't even say a word yet. His face was like, like trying not to fucking laugh, and I was like, "Dude, I can't take this seriously." He's like, he's like, dude, I try to stay, my keep my face straight the entire time, but like, dude, you're fucking blowing it. It was so funny. Oh, maybe, uh, maybe I'll, me and Mason will do another one, or we'll try another one, uh, one, one day. But we will. Uh,
Yeah, I, no, dude, I've literally, I've battled with YouTube. Like, I want to create YouTube content, but again, it's just not, I don't know. One day I will, maybe. One day, maybe. But okay. either way, anyways, you know, you know, do what you got to do, Ethan. Um, I think you know what you need to do. Um, and mm -hmm. any question that you have, of course, you know, we'll kind of advise you on, on your way. Um, Sounds good. I think I've got um, like three more weeks with you guys. It's gone by quick. I started at the beginning of the semester. How many more weeks do we have left? Like, like three weeks or so. Just about, yeah, three weeks on the dot. Damn, that was fast. Okay. This so, semester went by fast. It's a quick, quick time. Yeah. So if I'm you, Ethan, then I would say if I'm you, like commit to closing one to three deals. So yeah, ramp the fuck out of ad spend, dude. Mm -hmm. ad spend, like, I, I thought we had more time. I thought we had like eight weeks. So if I'm you, like ramp up ad spend, let's we are really focus on nurturing and selling um to get the step system uh, built out for you. Yeah. Sounds good. I'll ramp them up tonight. Get get moving on it. Um anything else, Ethan? No. I'm just I'm stoked to type W's in the chat. Because I closed my first sales call, so it's been a while, that man. The chat. We we missed you. It's been uh, February twenty fourth. You know, we're we're due for another win from you. Definitely, definitely, we'll get on that. We'll get on that, guys. Um, Adam, actually, uh, is anybody else here? Anybody else have anything? No, just you, Adam. Cool. What what you got for us, Adam, in terms of updates? I'm gonna take off, guys. By the way, see you. Take care, yeah. guys. Peace. Have a good one. Have a good night, bro. Uh, update for Market Street Agency. Let's see. Um, so yeah, we have slowed down our pet grooming ads considerably. Um, yes, we have three discovery calls tomorrow. We have a super hot lead sales call on Wednesday that could potentially be our fourth close. Um, so that's pretty much where we're at. Are you looking at, yeah, you're looking at Tony's questions. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to watch um, this video yet. It's um, not, he pretty much just runs through our ad spend. Um, and he just kind of shows you guys uh, like our, our pipeline strategy. But I don't think there's any particular questions in that loom. I think the questions he typed out underneath. Okay. So the larger client has a market company that runs ads for them. He's offered to ask them to pause those ads, but they will still have. We are able to run out ourselves and let the... So I guess, is, are you saying like, is this that one big client that already has somebody running ads for them? And you're yes. kind of like, okay. So I guess like, what is the problem that you guys are trying to solve for? Like, what do you guys see as, as being a problem right now? Um, I would assume that the problem that you guys have, the problem that you're seeing right now is just that hey if we like run ads from this ad account they might copy our stuff and then you know we don't have any leverage they can just like fire us after a month and then you know go back to that ad com uh, that company pretty much okay so in terms of your leverage i mean the you only have two two plays one play is just to convince them to uh you know you have a conversation with the business owner and say, hey, look, um, I'm happy to run the ads for you just really quick. I just want to kind of share the situation with you. The situation is this for proprietary purposes. We don't really share our ad strategy or anything with anybody um, other than the client. So, um, you know, one option is, you know, if you'd be open to it, to have us be the only people on this ad account. And so you as the business manager, you remove their access. Now, if that's something that you feel like would rub them the wrong way, I totally understand. I totally respect that. And I don't want to cause any kind of friction. The other option is for us to simply run the ads from our ad account. Yeah. And so you just do whichever. You either run the ads from their ad account or you run the ads from your ad account. Most people, again, what they're doing is they're running ads from their own ad account. 
So if I were you, honestly, that's probably what I would do is I would just run the ads from your own ad account, honestly. Okay. When it comes to the gym, I would assume you guys are running the ads from the client's ad account, yeah? Correct. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that was that case. But like moving forward, when it comes to done for you, most people are running ads from their own ad account. They're not running ads from their client's ad account. Most people. Okay. Just so you know in the future. So like all of your dog grooming companies, as long as you're doing done for you, you're most likely running ads from your ad account. Okay. Um, so yeah, our goal is to launch, we told them the 14th, but we would really like to be launched by Wednesday just to have like a four day head start and just try to kind of show them what we're about. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much our plan. I believe we have, I believe Tony used one of his production company interns to create some ad creatives and everything. Um, we need to create sub accounts and then I will go in and build funnel and the automation. Um, I do have a question regarding automations, Mason, because I am just stopped at this point. Um, so pretty much I created a sales call, a sales call calendar for our pet grooming leads. Um, and the trigger to the automation is us one booking second. them on um, the sales call. What's up? I'm one second. Just, I don't know if Mason is there. Mason, are you no, there? No, I'm here. Yeah, no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Okay. Um, it's it's a classic. I mean, it's a it's exactly what we've learned how to do, and it's worked fine for every automation I've built up until this particular automation. So we have our separate pet grooming sales call calendar. The trigger to the automation is us booking them in the calendar, confirmation message, reminders, the normal automation. But I cannot figure out why it is not sending them a meeting link. Um. In, like in the beginning, when we first started getting pet grooming leads in and we first started booking sales calls, it was like, I'd say like 30% of the time it would send them a link in their email and in the text message. Um, but recently it's been like no links every single time. So we ended up just turning off that automation and we've just been kind of booking them manually and uh, just sending them messages and sending them a link before the call. But I just don't know what, I don't know what we're missing. Are you using Zoom or Google Meet? Google Meet. Okay. Um, next question. Do you, you said you have a calendar. Did you, are you using two calendars for two separate sales calls or is it the same calendar still? A uh, separate calendar, separate calendar for sales calls. We have our our lead generation calendar from our campaign from our funnel, and then we have a sales call calendar. Got it. And you said both of them now are not functioning, or just one of the two of them? Just the sales call calendar. Do you know if you have? Can you send me a screenshot of the trigger that you made for the calendar? Yep. Because what I'm thinking is. You don't have it set where it needs to be. The appointment is maybe already confirmed or like auto confirmed. That's why it's mm. not sent the link. Okay. That would be my guess. So I could, if you want, send me a screenshot of that and then I'll send you a loom video going over how I do it. And then you can copy my settings and then send me a link to your calendar <laughs> and then I'll just book in it and then we'll see what happens. Okay. That, 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 that I feel like that should already be able to fix your problem. If I if I'm understanding you correctly, I think that's what the issue is. Okay, that sounds that makes sense. I'm gonna send you this picture on Slack. Um, but like yeah, like for now, I just kind of tweaked the automation to where we can still throw them on the sales calendar. They'll still get a confirmation message. It's just not sending them a meeting link. Um. We're just manually sending a link right before the call. But we would like to obviously have that figured out and understand. I, I just want to understand um, what's going on with that. 
but I appreciate that, Mason. Yeah, it, you're good. Um, it could also be something with Google Meet as well. I use Zoom myself, and then okay. you can basically what you can do is you can create like a custom. Actually, you don't even create it; it's auto created for you. Um, there's like a custom key and link that you can use basically for any of your sales calls. So it's basically the same link every time that people join. They just join at different times. It's just automatically uh -huh. generated. So all you have to do is just copy and paste that link. And then whenever they join at that specific time is when the link will work. Okay. But yeah, you, should be able to, you should be able to do the same thing with Google Meet. Like you should have like a customized like key for the host or something along the lines of that. But if that, if what I said before doesn't solve the issue, then I know that that will. And we'll just have to figure out how to do it for Google Meet because it should be possible. Okay. Does it, everything like does that make sense what I'm saying? Or I think so. Yeah, I'm gonna have to probably listen back to this, but um, yeah, I think I understand. Um. What else you got for us, Adam? For our new campaign, we're running for our gym. Um, yeah, it's like a kids summer camp kind of deal. We got eight leads in today from it, um, but we are not receiving internal notifications. Um, the automation looks looks proper. Um, so I'm just not sure why we're not getting text messages. Their their other campaign that we're running for the or that we just stopped running for the six week challenge, we've gotten every lead. We've been notified for every single lead. Um, but just as of today, and this this automation's published for the kids camp. Um, what's the, the trigger? Uh, yeah, what's the trigger? Facebook lead form submitted. Um, we have the proper the proper lead form selected. Um, and it's mapped as well. You mapped it. Meaning. So if you go to like your forms or those integrations, you should say it should say like Facebook form mapping and TikTok form mapping. And then you go in, you select the form, you select the form that you've already made on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, wherever you made it. Then you have to check a box that's like, okay, yes, this is the one that I'm trying to use. And then it's going to ask you to map fields. So for example, if you're asking for a name inside the field, then you'll have to select name on go high level. Same thing with email, same thing with phone. Mm, this is inside high level or, or Facebook? What you're it's, talking actually, about? it's inside high level. Could you, could you just repeat that one more time, what you just said? So Mapping. your trigger, your trigger, you want to be under Facebook lead form submitted, not just lead form, right? Like, not yes. just form submitted, right? So that's the first thing. Second okay. thing that you want done is there's, I forget exactly where it is. I don't have my computer on me right now or right in front of me, but there should be a setting at the top of maybe like, forms or integrations or something along the lines that says like Facebook form like mapping or okay. TikTok form mapping. So okay. if you click on that, it should generate all the Facebook forms that you have integrated on your go high level account because you've connected your Facebook page. And then you mm -hmm. have to select and verify that that's the one that you want to use. If you, if you send me a, if you send me like a text in Slack, I can send you like a video on like, I guess ping me in Slack and then say, yo, Mason, can you send me a video on not just your calendar settings, but can you go in and show how to connect to Facebook lead form to go high level? Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Cause I think this is our first campaign that we're running with a Facebook. Wait, no, I think we're using a, a lead form for the, you should be, I was going to say, you're probably using one for the six week thing or whatever, right? We are. Yeah, we yeah. are for sure, actually. I think I helped Tony like manually set that one up. I think that's why maybe there's a disconnect or maybe he okay. just forgot to do that additional step, but I think that's what it is. Okay. Cool. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind just sending me a limb sometime tomorrow, if you have a, if you have some time. Um, But that's pretty much it as far as, as far as questions go um i mean we're gonna have 
we're going to be pretty, we might be kind of overwhelmed this week, honestly, with trying to get these campaigns launched. I mean, we're, we're in it now. We've, we've proven to ourselves that we can find dog groomers on Facebook and we can get them to sign up for our ads. So that's a great sign. Um, sales meeting we have on Wednesday she is the first groomer that we've gotten here in North Carolina. All the other leads are all over the country. Um, but she's here in North Carolina. She has some ad experience from running her own campaigns. So she created her, she said, she said her niece created a creative, like a graphic for her. She ran a Facebook ad with it and she said, it just blew up. She said she was able to book her calendar for like two months and she was only spending like 10 bucks a day. And then, so she was super stoked on that. Um, and she said that she's tried twice since then with no luck at all. So mm -hmm. she's to the point now where she just really wants to pay somebody that knows how to do it because she's seen it work before. Um, I think it's also a good sign for us. Like if she was able to, to get some some people interested um and i don't think she was running any special offer i think the ad that she was running was just like we're a concierge dog grooming service like we'll come pick up your dog give them a full spa day like there was no special offer or any really specific call to action um so i think that's a good sign just to just to know that people have done it um but yeah the the next step now is just to deliver with with these groomers that we have now and i mean our main goal is to, is to really deliver for our franchise guy who has 10 locations for us because that would be a game changer for sure yeah with with her i mean you for sure want to i mean honestly these people a lot of times they don't know what they don't know and so it could be as simple as like she had an ad and then she turned it off and tried to turn it back on or she tried to duplicate it but a different type of campaign like it can be the silliest thing where like maybe it still does work. Maybe it's still yeah. and it actually works. And like, she just doesn't know what the heck she doesn't know. Sure. And so like the reason I bring that up is that was like a strategy that me and Mason use. He had like a, a client um, where somebody else has ran ads. And all we did is we went in and saw all the ads that were running and we figured out the, we, we just did research to figure out like, okay, which one of these has performed the best. And Mason, all he did is he just turned it on and increased ad spend. And he just like sat there and chilled for four months and got paid. Yeah. Few, and so I bring this up because like you can, one, I would definitely like look into that Two, Another thing is just like really dig that. And, and, and I think, you know, Tony's really good about this. So maybe you can pass some of this off to Tony. Uh, but like he, sh he probably already knows to like dig his knife into that wound, which is like letting her know, like, Hey, here's what happened. Here's uh, you, you see the power of it. And what happens is you can make it seem like fleeting where it's like, Hey, look, if you, don't turn off ads. What happens is somebody else in the area collects market share. And then all of a sudden, mm. you know, you can't compete for the ads. And I've literally seen it. It's like, you have like uh, a dog groomer, dog groomer, dog groomer. And so Facebook was like helping her get all these leads. And then she turned off the ads. And then now this competition, this competition is taking up the leads. So when she tries to turn off the ads, the leads are gone. It's like, Hey, this is what you did. But now we have an opportunity with a brand new offer to capture this market share. You don't want to miss out on this opportunity. You put the fear of God into her. Yeah, right? you do that kind of stuff. Yeah. You really do the nice thing, and she's gonna. She's already sold that the ads work, and so you just need to help her see like why things may have gone wrong, and help her see like, hey, here's the issue. If you don't do this again, and actually like, keep them on this time, so I would assume that she's gonna hop on. You know, just you know, knowing Tony, knowing the situation, and I would assume that assuming you guys are gonna get results, re retention should be pretty pretty high with her. Yeah. So I did take that discovery call with her. It's the only one I've had. Um, actually, it's the second one. The other one, Tony was double booked and I had to come, come in for him. But she, Tony was out of town for his daughter's spring break. So I did take discovery calls while he was gone. So I talked to her on Friday. I scheduled the sales call. I would really love Tony to take the sales call on Wednesday. Um, do you think that's the wisest, even though she hasn't spoken to Tony before? I mean, I know there is kind of a science to having multiple touch points, but at the same time, I mean, at this rate that Tony's closing and just listening, listening to every single sales call that he has, I'm just like, bro, like this is what you need to do. 
Yeah. Let me build the funnels and the ads. Please just take every sales goal. Well, you could, what I would do is if, because she's had this relationship with you again, I don't know what you've done in terms. It sounds to me like you, you didn't tell her necessarily who she's going to be speaking with, whether it's right. you or whatever. And so if I'm you, one thing you can do is you could put Tony, this is what I always do. You want to put that person on a pedestal. So for example, when I close somebody, I always put Mason on a pedestal. Say, hey, he's a great guy. And, and Mason, as you know, is a great guy. And so I get them really excited to have a conversation with Mason. You always set your person up again, wingman. So if I'm you, I'm going to go into that text conversation. I'm going to have a conversation with her i'm gonna get warmed up and be like hey um you know i'm so excited for you to have a conversation i'm so excited for you to you know meet tony on on wednesday tony is next level and you just really hype him up yeah uh, hype and so just do that and then she's gonna one go in and expect to have a conversation with him that it's not you and she's gonna have a high pedestal like and, and tony, tony obviously is gonna deliver on that um yeah that's it that's okay it. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll definitely, I'll definitely do that. And it just helps a lot with, with Tony hopping on a sales Thanks. call in his office with film stuff in the background. I'm just here in the guest room at my parents' house. <laughs> Make it uh, also the other thing that, you know, Hormozy would do is, and, and, and this isn't your case, but Hormozy, what he would do is he would hop on a, a sales call, have one person hop on a sales call. And then when somebody said that they're ready to buy, he'd be like, okay, we'll have to call John, just make sure he's available. And so John is the closer. So mm -hmm. then he'd be like, hey, let me have a conversation with John. And then so he puts this person like on speaker while he's like having a conversation with John. And then John's like, is this person serious? Are they going to do it? Are they going to be a time kicker waster? Mm -hmm. David, don't, don't, don't give me to hop on and waste my time. And so then this person will hop on, this person will close them. So what I'm trying to explain to you is like, there's urgency and there's like this person's like on high pedestal. It's like, dude, you're talking to the CEO of the company, man. Like, don't, don't bullshit. Don't waste time. Yeah. And so the reason I bring that up is if there's a way for you to do that, mm. to build Tony up, like I would suggest doing that as well. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. I don't think I've heard Hermosi talk about that before. So he literally just kind of like puts it on speaker and it's kind of like not too close to the, to the call, but just so they can kind of hear it. That's smart, dude. I like that a lot. That's good. Really good stuff. That's pretty much it. I'm sure we'll be slacking you guys every day until next week. But um overall yeah. we're feeling we're feeling pretty good. I'm uh I'll be down in Wilmington with Tony. I'm actually going down there to film a wedding this weekend and then another one next weekend. So I might just end up staying down there um where he's at. But we're just we're just ready to you guys are be at the office. You guys are doing What's good. That? You, guys yeah. are, you guys are in smooth control. Uh, cruise control. I said smooth control, but you guys are smooth. You know, things are things are running smooth for you guys, it sounds like. Um, how are, for you, like, how are things going? You and I had a conversation, you know, a few months ago. How are you doing? Good. Um, good. I mean, with, with the way things are going, it feels feels promising and um overall i'm feeling i'm feeling really good about things yeah okay. so there's a, it sounds like there's a big difference between the last time we spoke versus now last time we spoke you were in a different place it sounds like so overall are you pretty good you feel like you're pretty good with everything Any i think so yeah i think we're, we're coasting right now i think we're figured out the partnership and like how to uh like what I can bring to the table, that's, that's different. That's how a partnership works. Um, yeah. Overall, man, I feel pretty, pretty good about things. And I mean, we haven't proven by any means that, that we can crush it in the pet grooming niche yet, but every sign that we've gotten so far is showing that's possible. I mean, just what you shared with me today, like I had no doubts that it would work. Like I had no doubts. I knew that you guys would figure it out sooner or later. But the fact that you just share what you share with me today regarding her, it's like, dude, it's already working. You just got to yeah. find it. So you yeah, guys are and every groomer we've spoken to, not everyone, but a good amount of them have said, like, you guys are the only agency I've talked to that only works exclusively with groomers. Like, I think this is so cool. Like, I've never talked to, to anybody that's mastered the, the dog grooming world. So, I mean, we very well could be the the number one dog grooming agency in America, you know, it's That's possible. Super, like the fact that you guys brought that up now that gets my wheels turning. And now you guys have horizontal integration. If you guys want to scale this even further. So if you yeah. guys put this out, this dog grooming thing, you guys figure out how to scale it. 
now there's other vectors you can go into other sectors there's cats and then there's this and there's that and you guys can create a specific agency per animal mm -hmm. so i don't that's like that sounds to me like pretty amazing i like that yeah and we want to step outside of we want to like you know get into the pet product world eventually um pet food anything pet related dog dog walkers dog doggy daycares that's all long-term goals for sure um but I think I think we found where we want to where we want to be, and just the fact that we've ta been talking to leads from all over the country. I mean, it's it's awesome. Like there, there's a limitless amount of potential clients out there, and it's it's kind of crazy to see. But that's just the world we live in now. Mm -hmm. You guys did the hard work, man. You guys put in the work. You guys deserve it. So yeah, we did. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys too. Got you. Thank Any, you. Anything else that I don't think so. You wanted to go over, Adam? I don't think so. I'll definitely send you that message, Mason. Um Tony might Tony might have some some more questions in Slack tomorrow um regarding our grooming client that has the other agency working with them, but I'll I'll try to explain to him um what you recommended. Awesome. Which is very simple. We should just use our ad account. Hundred percent. Just use your ad account, and then one day, if you guys switch over to done with you, that's you know we can have a conversation about that. That's when they'd be running ads from their own ad account. But you guys aren't there yet. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, if that is everything, um, Mason, Kyle, uh, do you guys have anything? I'm good. Okay. Cool. If that's everything, then I will see you hooligans here next week. Peace.